Okay. I'm ready now. Hotel family. Today we have one of the greatest metaphysicians, metaphysicians, sorry about that, of this age in our midst. He is, a, he is internationally known and sought after lecturer. He was, he has conducted more lectures than any metaphysician on the scene today. His wisdom and knowledge of the occult is second to none. He is a teacher to many young up-and-coming metaphysicians. Two of his lectures entitled Indigenous People Rising Through Ritual and Rapid Third Eye Acceleration are considered by the House of Kemet as two of the greatest lectures of this age. I can go on and on, ladies and gentlemen, but now we got to wake up. Hey, Bobby, y'all.
this would not be possible for the simple fact I would have to, you know, uh, seal out that type of thing. So they kind of left the field open for that. So when they sent the sister Ginger, she was in her, she was 20, and she wasn't, you know, she wasn't interested in having children or anything like that, not at that particular time. So these, this is the way the thing adjusted. So I say that to say, in 1994, we went to a Native American mines in Jackson, Tennessee, and we unearthed this spirit called Thunderdog. A Thunderdog. Um, and if you ever buy a picture packet, which is about 70 photographs or 70 pictures of gods around the world, um, just go, go on the uh, website. Uh, don't, don't go on, uh, well, you just call this number, 678-358-1055. Uh, uh, and if you ever get the picture pack, there's a picture of Thunderdog in that package. It's a Native American form of Anubis. But it was a real uh, living human that was in the ancestor realm when we went down to these mounds. And immediately when we went to these mounds, they opened Ginger up psychically. So, um, in the course of the next two years, I was getting, I was trying to ask these different questions to the spirit world. And I said, well, um, what happened to the shoe industry? What happened to this? They said, no, we worked around the clock to get you out of that to do this. You see what I'm saying? Even the thing with, with Ginger coming, you see what I'm saying? Because they knew I was supposed to have children. Now, I say that because today when we get into this particular lecture, there's a certain amount of things happening. What's the name of this lecture? Overcoming destiny and faith. Right, overcoming destiny. So it's very key. It's a very important lecture based on where we end up. So this is not, it's going to be the basic dominant lecture where we give the particular information out because learning is always key. But it's also going to be, well, where is this going? Where is this going? Something has to turn into something. Because when it, it, it can't be the thing of, of, of raising up the black race, but the black race is through. So what is our goal? And if, if, if it's not about, you know, each one teach one and, you know, the masses and all of that type of thing, but we're going to get into some science on that too, on why that's not actually the case, but how we all
that thing still so I told people Obama was supposed to do one thing for black people only, and that's to win the presidency. Just to say that we have fulfilled all occupations in this country. But other than that, that's it. Because quiet as kept, a president can't really make you affluent or free you or anything like that. But it can also do it. It can only psychologically say that we did that. That was it. That, that, was, that was the only thing he was supposed to do. Because if you heard this nigga last week, right, right. <laughs> he let you know that he was under assignment. Now let me explain what I mean. To you. For the last two years, he lit white people boots and butts. He panty, I mean, the, the, the gay people came, don't ask, don't tell. He got in bed with them, bent over backwards. The Jews came, bent over backwards. The Republican Party, he been bent over backwards with them. And this man did not say anything out of order for the last three years, close to three years. And he goes to the Congressional Black Caucus and tell people to quit whining, quit drumming. Take off your bedroom shoes and put on marching boots. Wait a minute, hold on now, wait a minute. We didn't hear nothing from you complaining when, these, when, when, when Rush Limbaugh was calling you Obama the Magic Negro. You didn't say nothing. It did. So much to white people were saying, when is this man going to have a bad home? And then you go to the Congressional Black Caucus and you're going to use the time to say, quit grumbling. Quit whining. You see what I'm saying? At a time when, when, when black people, do you know they say black people now are in the depression era? They, they always say white people in a recession, black people are in the depression. So they, the Congressional Black Caucus was the people, when the people say, we have done the numbers and it's almost 17%. Depression era is where black people are faring in this financial situation. The problem here is, that whole thing about, you know, a bumblebee based on the body structure and the wings, man, it's not supposed to fly. But because it don't know it's not supposed to fly, it flies anyway. We have been poor so long until now we have dropped to the lowest in the country. And it's just like another day that us people are battling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People are battling. Oh, white people got to kill themselves on the little road from the little recession. But now they're saying, you know, based on black people, we are in the depression era. But yet, black people walk around like it's 1980. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's 1980. Now what that's also saying is trying to tell you something about yourself. That if something has happened to us and we don't know it. We have become gods. A god is the only person that can rise above its situation haphazardly. It means that you are in another dimension where you're supposed to be, because they're all saying, we don't, we don't understand why they ain't riots in the streets. I said, now you need to visit some other niggas for that. <laughs> We ain't been that in a while because, believe it or not, they were saying that unemployment been 15% since 1982 for black people. You see what I'm saying? So obviously, we have learned how to function, you see what I'm saying, even in poverty. You see, so in so many words, like you say, well, what's the solution? Because they talk about a double-deal recession. Well, say, well, you need to get some science on Try to learn how to black people on how to live when you ain't got shit. <laughs> and so in so many words, that means that you have already become gods and don't even know it. That you can function in, you know, and, 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 and not only that, you're functioning at a time when food is higher, gas is higher, utilities are higher. You see what I'm saying? You know, you're functioning at that time, but it's like, Nothing seems, you know, well, well, if you say, well, look at our people all on the street on the down, well, we've been that way for the last, we've been that way since 1865, so, okay. What's new? What's, what's new? You see? They're saying that, they're saying that crackheads, after a couple of years of being on crack, 
the addiction burns up. They just don't get happy over it. They can get off of it because whatever it was that was keeping them addicted, it just burned up. Now that might have something to do with melanin able to morph into, you see what I'm saying? Whatever form it hits it, you see. Whatever form it hits it, you see. So it's a very interesting thing that's actually happening. Um, um, I, and, and so what happened was, so we're going to go into that, but I'm going to go into a certain amount of things that, um, that's been happening to me. So uh, somebody ought to kind of check that thing and see if I'm in view. Uh, and, and you can still see, but don't move the camera. Just, yeah, you're good. Okay, I'm good. Okay, I just want to say that. Um, I'm going to get into a couple of things. Let's see, the first thing I'm going to get into is this. Um, they just killed a number two Al-Qaeda member. Now, Al-Qaeda is a government organization started by the United States and Britain and Illuminati. Now, they had one guy, an email. They used to try to bring him on Sean Hannity to try to embarrass him, but he always kicked his ass up, so they stopped bringing him on. His brother. He said, I've been going to Islamic conventions since 1974, and we in the Islamic community have never heard of anything called Al Qaeda. <laughs> never. We know that your boy died in 19, uh, 2001, uh, Bin Laden. That's why they didn't show you no body coming, they're going to bury him and see and all this kind of stuff here. You see. Uh, and, and all of this. This other guy, now you say, what does this guy to do with us? It's got a lot to do with you. It's got a lot to do with you. It's all about you. That's what it's all about. Now, the guy that they killed yesterday, the day before yesterday, a lucky us, uh, or whatever, uh, whatever the shit is, <laughs> was from America. He was from America, Al-Walaki or whatever, was from America. And he became the number two Al-Qaeda man, they saying more powerful than Bin Laden than Bin Laden because he could speak English. You see what I'm saying? Now, so they killed him because it's, 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 yeah, they can kill him. It's their organization. It's, it's interesting, after the Twin Towers, everybody that try to do something terroristic they get them before they could actually do it. And we know it's, if you want to blow up something, you wouldn't tell nobody, you just do it. Right. You see what I'm saying? So now, they killed this guy, supposedly. And he's from America. Now let me go into what this is about. What this is really about. Okay. There's a group of white boys that stands up downtown New York around Times Square. Used to be the black Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites. Stand up downtown, call white people the devil, read it out the Bible, and nobody does anything to them. Well, nobody does anything to them. Well, you know, they got Hebrew groups that started in New York in the 1800s. Whole families that could read Hebrew. So as a result, sometime in the 1970s, to, to put an awful stain on those original Hebrew groups, the government produced these, these people to stand up and curse people out and, and call the white man the devil and all that with all the chains and all that stuff on downtown New York. This is what the, the original Hebrew people who grew up in the Hebrew thing, but they had Hebrew groups starting in the 1800s. They said, no, those were, that was a government group. It was put out to cast a spell over all of us to delegitimize us. So all of a sudden, sometime in the 1990s where the, where the black Hebrew Israelites used to be, they got these white, Muslims that stand up talking terrorist threats, 
called Revolution Muslim. Revolution Muslim. So they made one or two many terrorists. Now remember now, this is all set up by the United States government. So when, when Barack Obama went to the Congressional Black Caucus and told you to quit whining, you quit grumbling and get off your house shoes. See, that's some ghetto shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was on assignment by the people who tell him what to do. Now, this man came up a whole week apologizing to the Jews based on Palestine getting to Israel, getting, getting, a, getting their own state, the Palestinian state. And, they, and so, uh, uh, the boy came, one of the guys from Texas, is running for running for president. Perry, Perry. Perry comes out and talks shit about Obama, saying he don't like the Jews. And Obama apologizes all week. And he goes in, and, and the man from Palestine comes in, and they do their stuff for the Palestinian state. And then, I think it was that Friday or that Thursday, and then the Barack Obama goes into the Congressional Black Caucus and blast black people. Get off your bedroom shoes. Quit whining. And they're like, who the fuck are you talking to? <laughs> you see, he was on assignment. See, what happened was, what's your girl from California? Oh, Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters and then blew his cover because when he said, I'm going to hit the road to, to do my um, job plan, he went to all them little white states, hugging little white babies. And they were like, wait a minute, hold on, bitch. We, we in the worst state ever. You can't come through here. Right. So it embarrassed him. But then again, it's not about that because he's been embarrassed by white people all the last two and a half years. But he's on assignment. So whoever is his boss, tell him, we want you to go. And you can tell, tell how to set up. If he would have came in at the beginning and said, you need to quit whining, you need to get off with your house shoes, you could go, wait, 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 hold on. He might have had some people to stand up in the audience. No, what he did was it was clever. Now anybody know about preaching? There's a part about preaching. We call it down south. It's a yeah. The preacher, you know, he'll come up and he'll do his his sermon, and he goes on a rant like what he call it the glory, glory road. And I'm so and so and so. And so you know, that's the glory. You know, you get ready to get out of church. We he get ready to go to glory. I said, thank God. He done got on the glory road path. Now he gonna bring it on home. So that's what Barack Obama did. He waited until a certain point, then he started going into that preaching mode. Put it up your bedroom shoes, quit whining. And so the people, because they're so used to that, they kind of messed some of the black people up. So they didn't even catch it at first, and they go, wait a minute. This motherfucker talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> but he was on assignment. He was, he was on assignment. You understand what I'm saying? You see, for whatever, the, for whatever it was, you see what I'm saying? Just like the Herman Cain. <coughs> and, and what's that girl's name? Um, Janine Garofalo, the comedian, busted out on um, your boy's show. Uh, he, he was on MSNBC, Countdown with Kilo. And she came on, and about a month before that, I said, wait a minute, somebody paid him to be in there. See, let me explain how this goes. If you got a black candidate and he's the only one running, he's running on a post, nobody from the Democrat is going to run, you see what I'm saying, and knock his chances off. So, uh, it's Obama versus a whole bunch of white people. So the loop kind of locks out. So what they did is, is they paid Herman King to come in and run. Now you know he ain't got a snowball chance in hell. Hell, they didn't like the light-skinned Negro. You think they gonna like that? Uncle Bill up in that motherfucker? <laughs> Come on. But they put him in there, and guess what? He's brilliant. If you ever hear that one, he's he one of the best candidates. Like, people are like, damn! Yeah. I was like, oh shit, this motherfucker nigga is sharp! <laughs> but see, they had, to, they had to have somebody juxtaposed to Barack Obama. You see, the most stupid person is Rick Perry, whatever his name is. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and your girl, she just make all kinds of mistakes, historical flaws. Wow. Wow. But Herman Cain, they were like, oh shit. And I heard him, I was like, man, this cat he didn't know what he's talking about. You see what I'm saying? And all honesty, he's the best candidate up there. 
But they had to do that so it could look like an even race. You see what I'm saying? So, but you gotta realize all this is on assignment. All this is on assignment. More than likely, Barack Obama probably will win it again. You see what I'm saying? You see? Since there ain't no such thing as you winning by vote anyway. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who's count, who's looking at the people who count the that? If, if if George Bush can win, certainly Barack Obama can win again. So what I'm trying to say here is, when he came to the Congressional Black Caucus, it's an assignment. Now, let's go further into this experiment. They got this group, white group called Revolution Muslims. And they talk, they go to, down by Times Square, and they just stand on the street and talk terrorist threats and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, I, I drink this vitamin water because I think 50 cents bought it. Yes. So, you know, 50 cents is a part on it, so I think, you know, it ain't about you giving no money, but I think that hell, we drink all this stuff with white people we doing the least. If the brother's into it, I, I guess I need to drink this too. <laughs> so, you know, and I was pretty good. So, um, so this revolution Muslim is a group, and they stand, stand up and do ter ter terrorist threats. We don't pull a libation on them. They stand up and they do terrorist threats. So all of a sudden, sometime this, this spring, they got in trouble. See if, see if you still see, still see me on there. Yeah, you good. Okay, sometime this spring, I guess I got to you know, stand here because the people there, you know. Uh, they got in trouble. Some terrorists did some stuff they did. And they said, well, wait a minute. If one of the guys that they was trying to catch, they said, well, where is he now? They said, he left the country. Now remember that this is the government organization. Now I gotta listen very close to what I'm trying to say. They said he left the country. They said, where did he go? They said he went to Morocco. Why did he go to Iraq, Morocco? Why did Morocco give this guy with a terrorist threat asylum? He couldn't go to London because they got the hate laws over there. You know, Farrakhan can't go to London to this day. Chuck D and none of them, and you know, can go to London. You know, when I was over in London, they asked me about the making of the white man. I said, I don't know what the hell you talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I start singing some Beverly Hillbillies on the air. I said, hell no, I don't know what you talking about. They got hate laws over there. You see what I'm saying? You know, so, um, so why did Morocco take them? Take this terrorist threat person, and even a terrorist threat is an act of terrorism. So these countries can't deny you. No, you can't come up in here. Why did Morocco? Morocco took him because he was a citizen of the Moroccan government, this white boy. Why? Because the, the American government who set these white boys up, the first thing they do is make you citizens of the Moroccan treaty, the Moroccan government. Does this sound for me or you? Yes. Any of you moors up in here? Let me tell you what's going to let it happen. You ain't got nothing to do with the white boys. Now listen to what's going on. I told the people this in New York. This guy fled to Morocco because they're under the Moroccan treaty just like these moors out here under the Moroccan treaty. And the UCC and all of that. Now, stick with me on this. That's why I don't still have no fucking paperwork. <laughs> now, if you did it and you was ignorant, don't worry, you protect it. See, God protects fools. <laughs> Beggars and fools are crazy people. But now you've been warned. You see, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You see. Or like George Bush, George George Bush, fool me once and fool me twice. Well, you just can't be fooling me. <laughs> but, but this is what's happening. The Moors are under the Moroccan Treaty, which automatically made 
ask you citizens of the Moroccan government. Now the United States, what they did, or the people that, that run this thing, they got these white boys to get hooked up onto the Moroccan treaty. Okay? And, the, and, and these white boys are not only a member of the Moroccan treaty, but they are a member of Al-Qaeda, which is an American government. And that means that the Moors are members of fucking Al-Qaeda. And when they killed that motherfucker the other day, that was for you. Now you think I'm bullshitting? Well, CNN last Monday announced before they killed this Al Kawaki guy, they announced that the NYPD was going after the Moroccans in New York. They weren't talking about the citizens of Morocco. They were talking about the Moors because the Moors are under the Moroccan treaty. So they announced that they were going after the Moors on Monday. Now they had all that had the Moors on the terrorist group when they locked up the Moors down in Florida and was trying to blow up the World Trade Center and they sentenced them in, 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 uh, sentenced them in 09. You see? So the Revolution Muslim group, the Moors here, or the Moors around the country, they are all under the Moroccan Treaty, including that guy Al Zawaki, whatever his name. He was an American citizen. He was the mentor to have these white revolutionary Muslims. You see what I'm saying? They call, it's called Muslim Revolution. Go up on the website. It's called Muslim Revolution. He was a mentor to them, and they are all under the Moroccan Treaty. And so these big mouth niggas running this more shit. That's right, you terrorists now. And I've been counting this thing down for the, we, we, we've been on this one since 93. Since 93. You see what I'm saying? There used to be a people with a bunch of feds on, standing in the corner, and say, you know, we came over, the slaves came over. In 93 they were saying that the slaves came over on the trains. Now how you get a train to come across the Atlantic Ocean? And they don't went from the slaves coming off the trains to, 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 to being law students. See what I'm saying? You see. So they're locking people up. You know. But I just want to let you know how that's doing. The guy that they killed the other day, before they killed, they killed, before they killed him on Monday, they announced that the NYPD was going after the Moroccans. Wait a minute, that's like saying, well, you can't say, well, let's say the NYPD said we're going after the Jews. Well, the Jews are a certain group of people, a certain race of people. Uh, you see what I'm saying? And let's say we're going after black people. So when they specifically said that, they were not talking about the Moroccan community from Morocco. They were talking about the people under the Moroccan treaty. They were talking about the Moors. You see what I'm saying? Now, you look, you already signed up on it. Look, when I came to D.C., do a lecture for teaching. That's where me and my queen hooked up. Um, I'm hooked up. Was doing a lecture for TJ. That night after we did the lecture, he came back and he showed me all his papers. Signed by Colin Powell. He had diplomatic immunity and all of that. Signed off by Colin Powell. Now TJ, as you know, just went to um, doing a little time or whatever. They jammed him up. But if he had diplomatic immunity, and I saw the papers, I saw the actual documents, signed by Colin Powell. But if he had diplomatic immunity, why did he go to prison? Well, under diplomatic immunity, it's based on each administration got a sign off on it. So he was signed up on Colin Powell. So in order to be diplomatic, get diplomatic immunity now, he would have had to have been signed off by Hillary Clinton. Because every time an administration changes, you got to redo this. So the point I'm trying to make here is, I saw his papers where he was signed off diplomatic immunity, Colin Powell, for the Moroccan Treaty. I saw it with my own eyes. So I know that this shit exists. You see what I'm saying? I just want to just put that out there to let you know. They have already announced last Monday that they're going after the Moors. They will say Moroccans. This button is on CNN. 
And then they killed this guy who was from America, who was a mentor from the Muslim revolution, the white boys. You see what I'm saying? And they're under the Moroccan treaty because when they fled to Morocco, Morocco took them in because they're citizens. And all that's under Al-Qaeda. That's why most of the faces that they showed you after 9-11, the people that got caught, all the terror, the guy, the shoe bomber, the underwear bomber, they were all black people. You see what I'm saying? So they slowly whittling this thing down to tie it in to you. And it's got something to do wrong from anything where you put your name on anything. You see what I'm saying? Where you put your name on anything, we deal with anything outside of this country. You got to become incognito because that's not your destiny. Your destiny is to become God. Y'all all right? Yes, OK, we're going to get into all that. I'm going to post some libations. Get the gods in. And uh, we're going to set up over here later on. And uh, we got some, got a lot of stuff. Uh, we're going to post some libations. And um, um, this is Canadian Hunter. I'm dealing with anything the Hunter. The Hunter is the uh, Yoruba god Oshosi. Oshosi is the hunter. And the hunter is also Orion. So the hunter is also Osiris, Orion's belt. And we're going to deal with a lot with Orion and Sirius. And we're going to go into the science of Ramadan, which, is, which came out of ancient Kemet. And see, the priests only ate after sundown 365 days. It's just they set aside a, a, a festival period when Sirius was in the sky in the summer for the rest of the people in ancient Kemet, you see what I'm saying, to practice. And then later on, but, the, uh, but, but how the Muslims got it, remember now, that, that Arabia ain't nothing but Northeast Africa. You see what I'm saying? So a lot, a lot of those customs that the Muslims have you see what I'm saying? The stuff that came straight out of Kemet, came straight out of Africa. That's why you see the star Sirius in the Quran. This is the God who created both male and female from one singularly ejaculated semen. This is the God of Sirius. Now in Egypt, the Lord of Sirius is Osiris. You see what I'm saying? As well as Isis, the goddess of Sirius, stone sea. The throne, her thing is called the throne of Sirius. You see what I'm saying? This is the Lord of Syria. That's in the surah of the star. There's a surah of the cow. That's Heru Hathor. They got the surah of the moon. That's Tahuti and Kunsu. You see. Remember now, Muhammad couldn't read or write to the day he died. So the, pe the person who put that down was a literate person. We know now that Bilal wrote the Quran. You see. Bilal wrote the Quran. That was the person. That was, and they would call him a slave later on. But if he was a slave, why the hell he was able to go back to Ethiopia? You know, he returned to Ethiopia. They say where the, the place of Kush, where man is never wrong. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to pull libations. And I'm going to go into my ordeal. Um, uh, my ordeal. But like I say, what we're dealing with now. It's not necessarily you gaining knowledge to know who you are. We got to find out where we fare as gods. We've been saying we are gods. So it's got to become a time where we go, well, wait a minute, how do we put this to use? Or how do we tap into that field? See, this is where we are. Now, we laid in the game for the simple fact I've been doing this for 19 years. I've been, been studying this stuff for over 20 some years. So it's got to come a time where we say, well, where does all this shit lock in? And that's where we are. That's the destiny. You see, that's the destiny. So I'm going to tell you a series of, of, of things and events that's happening. You see, the events that's happening is going to go deeper into this type of stuff. And one's got something to do with my mother. I wish it wasn't her that went through this because the simple fact is, you know, because people go, oh, he talking about his mama. That's, a, you know, you know, like that. I wish it was somebody else. Then I can say, you know, I don't have a connection with this particular person. But it didn't happen to nobody. It happened to my mother. 
And this type of thing, what I'm trying to say here is, most people, when your people die, you ain't hear from your ass never again. You, every now and then, when you experience them in dreams, and you ever dream about your parents or dream about somebody, when you do that, that's a visitation. They're coming to you for a reason. You see what I'm saying? They're coming to you for a reason. But most of you never, what we have to find out now is if life, if this is just one segment of life, then what happens to you when you go on to another portion? They said, well, he just, you just got another assignment. It might not be in the physical world. You see what I'm saying? The physical world is the lowest world, and the physical world is the unreal world. It doesn't even exist. So if the physical world don't even exist, it's unreal. And what happens when you gain, come and you raise up out of that? And there's a whole heavens and cosmos. So what, what, are you, what, are you, what do we do? What do those people do when they leave this particular plane of existence and go to another reality? You, you see, another reality. So that's what we're going to get into. We gotta, see, we, we're sophisticated enough now to track shit other than the five senses. You see? Other than the five senses. So we got to break these particular mysteries down. There's things that's happening. You see, there's things that's happening. You know, and these people have other assignments. I was talking to Martin Luther King when his wife died. He said, oh yeah, that's a long time ago. Talking about his, his existence here. And he gave me some long ass name of what he was now. And a whole other feel of what he's doing now. See what I'm saying? So we can't track this type of stuff. We're going to get into that today. But now I hit home with some stuff that happened to my mother. So what I'm saying again, we got to, we have to push this thing along so that we can begin to track ourselves as what we are turning into or what, or what we have already become. You see, let me post some libations. The first one I'm going to post is to that Archangel Castiel. Now I'm gonna skip this. No, no, no. We, 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 good? we good, yeah. We, we deal with some. We deal with, with, with hydro fuel. <laughs> we must find the water and shit. It's rain out there and stuff. They, they want some fermentation. <laughs>
substance. First of all, he took over this black man's body and said, the black man said, study my skin. Write the gospel. But do not leave. So it was a black substance that took over this brother's body. And he said, study my skin. So how did they kill it? They killed it with some substance, some dispersants that they used to clean up the Exxon Valdez oil spill. And it neutralizes carbon. Melanin is carbon. Oil is nothing but carbon. So they, use, so they kill this melanated deity by using the dispersants that help clean up the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska. Okay? Now, um, Dean Coons wrote this book in 1983. Exxon Valdez didn't even start, it was 1989. So they added that in there by the time the movie came out. Okay, so check it out. Check it out. This new correction, they dropped in Africa. After they dropped it in Africa, the entire continent of Europe banned this thing, including England. It's banned. But BP dropped it in the waters here. And they're going to drop it for the next 10 years. They're going to drop it for the next 10 years. So what happens is this. A guy came all the way. There was a guy that lives in Brazil. He's never been in this country. He's in his 70s or 80s. He's a Babala under the Canton Blaze system. That's a form of, you know, Europe. You, you got Canton Blaze, you got Santeria in the Caribbean and, and, and all, you know, in Latin America. You got Canton Blaze and Kimbanda in Brazil. So this guy from Brazil calls and says, calls and says, black people in America, he's never been here, should not eat nothing out of the sea. Nothing out of the sea. So what happens is this. Now I'm gonna tell you, I gotta tell you, I gotta say you. you can get it, I'm give you my number when we put it up on the thing. You can get in contact with me and, and, and you can purchase this, you can purchase this DVD on the oil speed. In the DVD, they say, well, if BP blew up their own oil record, why did they do it? So they got all these people from around the world talking about this. So when they want to say something that's devastating to give you the real truth, they go to a guy with his back looking in a computer on one picture, a steel picture. You don't know who he is, and this is what he says. He said, shit. He said they want to kill off what they call, what the Illuminati call useless eaters. He said they want, to, they want to kill off the useless eaters. He said what? He said black people from around the Gulf Coast. He said most of them, a lot of them moved to Texas. A lot of them moved to Atlanta, but he said a lot of them moved to Texas, which is concerned with that. The reason why Texas brought them in because that's a state that executes people. You see. So a lot of them moved to Texas. You see what I'm saying? The first thing they did when they got to Texas is the red and black people from Houston committed crimes. They hushed that up and bring all the crimes that regular black people that was committing. Because we committed some damn crimes now. Oh, he's beautiful people. Yeah, let them motherfucker break in your goddamn house. <laughs> You ever had your shit broke into? That's a dehumanizing feeling when your, your, your TV set gone. That's a dehumanizing shit. It takes you a couple months to recuperate from that shit. You know it ain't nothing but a damn nigga now. You see? 
So the black people in Houston was committing the crimes, it was blaming it all on the people from Katrina. You see what I'm saying? Now, the guy said, no, they're trying to kill off the useless eaters. The useless eaters. That's what they're trying to kill off. See if I'm still in the view. Hmm? Yeah. They're trying to kill off the useless eaters. Now, let me explain what this thing does. This correction, and they got it on the tape, this correction, it, it's amazing how you didn't see a whole lot of fish dead. If they had the tsunami, they had thousands of fish dead. You know, what happened was this correction, it's a phantom enough that the fish can eat it and don't die. But if you eat any of the seafood, it attacks the melanin. Mm. So you're eating, so you eat this stuff that attacks the melanin, this corrects it. So the first thing that happens is you, you develop a cough. Anybody have had, had coughs during the, during the winter and then in the summer came, this coughs didn't go away? And you still got mucus and the mucus didn't go away? Oh, you know, you know, you, you know, the will you have, we're going to have mucus, you know, when June or July come, you know, your mucus is supposed to clear up and all this shit, but now they got mucus that's not going away. So when the guy called and said, nobody should eat any fish or anything out of the sea, because what it is, is they're dropping the correction, and because they let BP clean it up, BP is going to drop the correction for the next 10 years, and it's a slow kill. Mm. So what it is here, you 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 first come down with uh, with mucus. It's a slow kill. Now the people in the Gulf Coast are getting sick immediately. So I came down with this cough in January. I said, ah, you know, whatever, you know. No, I think it was like January or March, or whatever. And then July came, and I was still coughing. So the first thing my queen did is Yemen y'all, the goddess Yemen y'all came and said, tell Bobby don't. Get off the seafood. And then the guy called, the guy from Brazil, he got a bottle out that was over here, that called and said, well, uh, well he knows somebody, the, one of the bottle is in contact with somebody over here, called and said, um, the, the other guy said, don't eat nothing from the sea. So what it is, is this correction, what it does is it gets in the fish, and it is directly designed to destroy the melanin, but it's a slow kill. So what the spirit world say, no, we're going to give it to you. Because what it is, I, when you got a high up sensitive level, see, I have what is called a, an illuminated voice box. It's the stroke shock. That way I can, I can go into a, I have gone into gymnasiums and auditoriums and spoke and didn't need a microphone. That's because it's an illuminated heart shock, a throat shock. So, but what happens here is when something is, uh, when something is heightened, you're going to first be sensitive to things, it's going to show up. So the mucus started coming, and I developed this cough. That's because my throat chakra, that is on a high level, was sensitive to it. So therefore, they were saying, no, we're going to let you see, because the other people, this is slow kill, they're not going to catch on like that, because of the vibration, a lot of people are so low, and also, um, so I started coughing and stuff, and I sort of got off the fish. They started taking my appetite, so I went through a form of Ramadan in June. Well, I, I just couldn't eat nothing until after sundown. Then I went July, whole month, couldn't eat nothing after sundown. Then I went to Ramadan. I said, well, I'm already practicing it. <laughs> couldn't eat nothing. Start the process of elimination. I had gotten off of beef in 2000. And in, in, in 2010, you know, start getting off stuff like soy, soy is mucus forming, and stuff like that. Soy gives you a brain poison, <clears throat> calcifies the pineal gland. Mm. That's why it's in all the health food stores. Mm. And most health food products are made out of soy. You see, so, um, so what happened was, so what happened was, start getting up all the stuff, got all the meat. Now I was a vegetarian, 
and most of the nineties. Ninety-seven. I went in celebration and got back on the meat. <laughs> but you know something happened? I was veteran about seven years and I headed out for Kentucky Fried Chicken. I ate that chicken that first time. I'll tell you what happened. It was in 97. I was a vegetarian. You see what I'm saying? When you got back on me, the day I ate that Kentucky Fried Chicken for the first time, do you know I came down with paralysis? I was on the floor and I couldn't move my arms or my legs for about 20 minutes. <laughs> That's how much the body went in shock with that foreign agent and that poison. Now remember what Scott Whitaker said, that he had a guy that worked for Kentucky Fried Chicken and he had to go and take him to get, get, get the chicken from the corporate plant. And when he went, went to go get the chicken, they came out and people had on suits like oil spill suits or uh, 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 radiation suits. They had on radiation suits and they had the chicken that had a skull and crossbow on the damn box. And they pushed that shit out of him. Well, I can imagine when I ate that stuff, I, I, I went into paralysis for about 20 minutes. But it was all she wrote after that. So after 12 years, for 12 years, back on the meat. Oh, this is when I knew something was wrong, when I went vegan and I was still producing mucus. The spirit like, no, because I got off the meat. So I was off the meat two, two weeks and the angel showed up. I'm going to the science of that. The angel showed up. I'm going to show you what that's all about.
I'm tell you, I'm tell you, I'm going to go into this thing. So I entered into this particular realm, and in that realm, you can't have nothing, no dead carcass product. So in so many words, they took me through hell just to get me off the meat again, because I made a vow in the damn 2000 or the 90s, I'll never get off meat and I will never fast again. <laughs> when I got through, I got off the meat and I went on a fast for three weeks and I was going to go, I, you know, fast is cool because you don't, you don't, you know, you lose your appetite. So I was going to go to my birthday until my ass disappeared. <laughs> you see, and I said, wait a minute, I'm looking like this concentration camp on my and, and so she said, and so then I said, no, your ass is malnutrition now. <laughs> but what it is, is what happened was this here. So a sister called the other night and said, we, uh, one sister called and called, called Miss Blue on the blog talk and said, but uh, we don't know what we think. Is Bobby dead? So Linda was like, no, because she, she went through the vegan thing too. You see? And so they say, see, they said, no, he went through a transformation. So you were sensing because you, on this round, you assume when you ain't you ain't feeling something, and he's going through a transformation. It is a form of death. But what happened was, what, what happened with the fast is this here. That's why they say Jesus went on the fast for forty days. You see what I'm saying, like that? And he saw God or heard God or whatever type thing. Well, that's a sign. The Jesus is you. You are the Jesus. There ain't no man in no desert in Jerusalem. That's you. He took your birth like that. Historical bullshit. It didn't happen. That's you. This is the whole story of Jesus is what you went through. So a death, you say the death on the cross. You take your hand, do like this, and hold it out. That's your cross. The cross is the human body. In Egypt, it's called the mummy. Death in the mummy. Osiris is the death in the mummy. You see what I'm saying? So, um, so what's happening here is when you go on the fast and your your body is used to getting nutrition, and then what's going to happen? After about that third week, your body starts eating itself. It starts taking all the shit it can do for nutrition. So they found my ass. <laughs> and they start eating my fucking ass. I said, wait a minute, I, I don't want to be down to do some bones back there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I said, I'm trying to wait it out. They said, no, you can't do that because remember now, that's the pregnancy from the Buddha thing. This is what the yogis go through. With the stomach, remember you you had you had the stomach before you started gaining weight. That's the thing. When you when, because what happened here is that knowledge is food. Melanin is a, is is, is a cosmic records and it's nutrition. Melanin has stores knowledge and the knowledge is a nutrition. It's a new protein. It's a new protein. So what they're saying here is what's going to happen to you as the gods? There's a protein in you that's developed. And you eat from that, that's that mana from heaven. But that's melanin. Melanin has proteins in it. It has everything in the universe. You see, in the universe. So what happened was, because I was gaining so much knowledge, my stomach started getting bigger based on the proteins. The proteins. You see what I'm saying? There's a whole thing they get on Egypt. The Egyptologists came together to put all this, this stuff. But they, 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 Egyptologists are under mandate for the governments to say that they can't tell anybody the shit is metaphysics. Or just the pharaohs being dead and all this kind of stuff here. So what they did is they took all of the research they did for the last hundred years, gave it to a woman, and she went in and in the early 2000s wrote these texts. It's called the Isis Thesis. What's that woman's name? Huh? Uh, Judy, Judy K. King. And in there they say, well, to get to this God level, the race is going to produce a protein. The DNA is going to produce a protein. That's the form of the melanin getting to a God-like state. A God-like state. So in order to do this, the spirits, in order to do this, when I entered into that realm, what had happened was, this, let me explain how that was. All the correction and all that shit with the fish and all that. And it's a slow kill, so you gotta get off the seafood. That shit is dangerous. And they're dumping that shit now to this day. They're dumping it to this day. It's, it's, you see, it's all the same government shit. You see what I'm saying? It's correction, they own it. 
Let me tell you, they talk this shit in Africa. You remember the Africans was dying with AIDS? But they had a sister who grew up in a voodoo community from the homie. So she wanted the original shit. And she, she diagnosed people based on the spirit world. So people will come to her and she can tell you what's going on and diagnose your shit in the spirit realm. You know, they got people that can take their hand and stick in your body and pull out all kinds of disease and shit. You see what I'm saying? All kinds of diseases. So I can cure you with just some, just some liquor. Just the right kind of liquor can cure you. Can, can cure you. So this woman can diagnose you. They, so this woman, they brought this woman from Africa in 2006. Brought her to the Mohai School of Medicine, Dr. Uh, um, what's my man that used to work at Mohai School of Medicine? Dr. Charles French. So he, he made, it, made it possible, so we all went to see this woman. So she had a little dog baby in her hand. It was a white dog baby, but you know, you gotta realize now you See, the Africans don't look at race the way we look at race. They look at people from other parts of Africa as race. That's why they go to war with other Africans. See, what happens when you live on a continent where 90% of the people are dark skinned? And you are not a minority. So she had a dog baby, you know, had a white dog baby. And people kept saying, well, you know, why you got that white dog baby she's holding on her hand? And she was like, she was like in her late 50s. She said, well, that was one of my twins. That was my twin sister that died. When I was born, when I was born, I had a twin sister that didn't make it here. And so this is her. Now that's the story of Clemson had a, a sister, a brother that died and didn't make it into this world. So it's like a shadow. It's like another, it's like another double spirit that's attached to you. It also happened, um, uh, Krishna had a, a, a brother named Balarama that died and didn't make it in this world. So the doll baby, so the doll baby she had represented that other child or whatever, it's a spirit thing. So she diagnosed all these types of disease. People come from all over the world. So somebody asked her about AIDS, she said, she was like late 50s, early 60s. She said, I done diagnosed every disease. She said, I have never heard of anything or saw anything that even named AIDS. I have never seen AIDS or nothing like that. So her conclusion was, well, I have seen people sick with other things that the World Health Organization and the people over there diagnosed as AIDS, but I never saw AIDS. So when they dropped this correction, Oh, there was an oil spill over there in Nigeria. And they got a permanent oil spill. It, it, it spills all the time. So what they did is they dropped this correction. They dropped this correction over there. And the people started dying. Let me see. It was 70. On the continent, 70, 75,000 a month. And they was calling it AIDS. Over here, we're just giving you AZT, calling it AIDS. If you had money, like Magic Johnson, you see what I'm saying? They don't give you the AZT. And you so fat now, his head look like he swallowed the fucking basketball. <laughs> <laughs> see what I'm saying? So that's a whole politics thing. That's a germ warfare or AZT poison. So anyway, when it comes to this correction and stuff, once that happened in Africa, they banned it in Europe and in, in England. And now they dropped it over the seas here, and it's going to really kill melanated people and a lot of white people, because a lot of white people, gene pools is all mixed up. You see, just like uh, 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 Paul Mooney said, you shake a white person family tree, and a nigga will fall. <laughs> so that's called, you know, so. That's what's going on with that. Now, with the diet, what had happened was I had entered into this angelic realm, the Neteru realm. And I entered into this realm, but I had all this stuff in me based on the diet. And the side effects of being in that realm, I had a more mucus and more stuff like that because it was contrasting in a realm where you got to be pure. So, in order to get the full effect on this thing to lock into this realm, I had to go on a fast for three weeks and burn all that off and, and kill off all that and get all that animal stuff up out of there and stuff to lock into this particular realm. You see what I'm saying?
thing. So uh, uh, the lock is around. Now let me go into some other things. Because what we're talking about here is the day when they killed Troy Davis, first of all, they killed him on the equinox. So the government's equinox is the 21st. The spiritual community is the 22nd and the 23rd. But they give the 21st because they don't want people focusing on the real day, which is the 22nd and the 23rd. So they lock it in at the 21st. So they kill him on the 21st. And they kill him close to the 22nd. You know, they kill the other guy that drove the boy down the street. The guy down the street killed him on the same day. You see, these are rituals. These are rituals that's going on. You see. Now, so what happens here is, now we, we, we gotta do this thing here, this, we gotta do this. I have to do this. If your child makes any noise that's going on that camera, and the people all over this country will call me and curse me out. So you gotta leave the building, you gotta go to the back room or whatever and stuff like that. That's the policy based on if you was in CNN, we was on Pierce Morgan tonight. We wouldn't have no baby crying. That's the, that's the rules and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? You know, on that thing. I got a bad, I got a tape with you poop. She is at the top of her game. But half the shit you can't hear because they have a damn baby crying. And she didn't know the protocol, man. This is information that's coming down with our people. You see what I'm saying? And they might be cute and all that kind of stuff here. But no, you got to go to that exercise in that other room and stuff like that. I had it once that happened to me on the second or third lecture I did, and people cursed me out for 10 years. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, so, maybe can't, you know, you take it, you know, whatever. But anyway, going back to, oh, what was I? What was I on? Huh? What, what? On the ritual, Troy Davis. Troy Davis. Now, um, they killed this brother, but what I did was, and everybody was calling, people was calling the house, you're going to go down to the state house in Lawrence. I'm like, hell, I'm not going to no damn state house in Lawrence. <laughs> I said, what I'm going to do, I said, I'm going to go into celebration. I said, y'all got it wrong. Let's say this brother gets a stay of execution. He's got to go back and get locked up in the cell for another 20 years. He is getting ready to join the party and the guards. So we had a jam session. We had a jam session. See, I got this system. So I got, I got a system that you come in through Canada. They don't even allow, see, see, they tell you, see, they don't even have 100 watts in this country. Used to have them in the 70s. They're, they're getting 40 watts and call it 100. So I got a system that came in through Canada. It's 780 watts, it's almost 800 watts. So when we play this, let's say if I put on, let's say if I put on Billy Holiday, she literally comes to the house. <laughs> you put on Bob Marley, she literally comes to the house. That's how powerful this system is now. So we started jamming the music on, they call it on, I'll tell you today. We don't, it's called May Day. That's, that's called, what's that's called, you know, the Wiccan. The Wiccans call it, um, what they call it? The Wiccans call it, it's May Day, Beltane. But we put on Beltane, and we started jamming some music, and mess around and put on Tina Marie. So she came to the house. She said, you're going to have to play all my shit. <laughs> I had to dig, I had to find out. Luckily, I, I, you know, I found about five or six of her albums. We had to play, we had to play a damn melody. I'm like, yeah, shit. <laughs> she came, she came right straight there. Now, but that's what, but that's what it is when it comes to LPs. Most of you got rid of your LPs, but there's a way around this thing. Yeah, anybody still have stereo systems? Okay, this is what you do. The CD don't come with certain octaves so it don't hit the inner ear melody. But this is what you got to do. This is what you have to do. It came out with a CD player in the late 80s. They discontinued albums around 1990. They started shutting and phasing them out. And then they started giving most of the CD players made in the 80s, I mean, in the 90s. 
And it's made so that the, that the music don't hit the inner ear. Never. So this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. Now, the technology from 2000 on up, things change. So what you got to do, if you got a stereo system, is to get you a DVD player. And look on the DVD player and see whether it has Adobe Digital. It might have seven different uh, systems on it to read those DVDs. So let's say if you get a Sony DVD player or a Panasonic DVD player from like 1994 on up, or 1995 on, two, no, two, 2004, 2005 on up, where you look at they got MP3, they got Dolby Digital, they got this, they got, might have five different systems on it. Look, venues. You want to take that and plug into your auxiliary, auxiliary of, your, of, of your amp, or of, of your, of your, of your, if you got one that was made in the 2000s, you plug it into your, 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 your amp or your, your receiver and you turn it on DVD. And what it does is it puts back the stuff that they took out and it makes it equivalent to an album. And so this stuff enters the inner ear melody. Because the other day we was playing some house music. And most of the house we got on DVD. And so my girl, she goes and put on her Capizio shoes, the dancer shoes. And she'll go in and start dancing. But we played on the regular CD player. And the music could only, she could only feel the music in her legs. And so I said, I got a remedy for that. So the next day I hooked up the DVD player and then she started feeling it in her arms and the whole thing just went to a certain level. So that's what you want to do. Now the people that don't have the stuff, if, okay, let's say if you got a boom box or you got an MP3 or you got anything like that, what you want to do, or you got any, any, any small device, what you want to do to get the stuff to enter the inner ear melanin is you want to get a set of headphones. It costs about $100. They're called Sony. Professionals. It's too, you want to get professional studio headphones. It's a red and blue symbol on it. And it costs about a hundred. That's how you know a professional. But it'll have on the box professional. And anytime you see people in the studio, they'll either have on the Sony professionals or they have a, 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 it's a, it's a group from Germany. It start with a C or E. It's a German group. It, huh? Huh? Start, start with an S. The German ones with the S are the Sony Professional. So let's say if you got an MP3 player, or if you got a, a um, internal device that you want to put on, or a regular boombox, anything you play CDs on. And you don't have a regular big system. You want to get you some professional Sony, it says Sony Professional. This is the ones that they have to do. They have to use professional headphones in the studios because there's certain octaves and certain things they got to hear. Because if you don't hear it in the studio once they record it, you might be like, I didn't hear this shit. That shit is fucked up. <laughs> so you will see them. It's Sony Professional. So the people that have these small devices, you can still get around it. Let's say if you got an MP3 or let's say you got a regular Walkman or Sony or uh, a DVD Walkman, you can still get around it. You just got to go and go to a place. Do you have to have a guitar shop up here? Mm -hmm. yeah. They sell the one. They sell the one with the S. Just go and say, I want studio professional headphones. And be prepared to spend a hundred dollars. Remember, my mama said, you always pay for what you get in this country. That's why white people should be right. <laughs> the white people, money in your office, they get the best stuff. So you, you want to, but, okay, cool, cool. So what you want to do, what you want to do is, you want to get the Sony Professionals if you don't have a, a system. Now, if you got a system, who them Sony Professionals, put them on. You see what I'm saying? But if you're just walking around and you got a regular little piece of shit boombox, it could be an Emerson, it don't matter. The Sony Professionals will put the octaves back in. And anytime you see people in the studio, they got a professional headphones. 
And over put it, because what you want to do, you want the music to enter the inner ear melody. Inner ear melody. Now, for the warfare, you just in the rap. You want to play as much early rap as you can. That means rap from the 1980s up to about 2000. Or up to about a time when they killed Tupac or Biggie. That was the time when they was when they killed them two people. That's for the time when they started doing shit even worse. So even the people with the rap, if you into the rap, compared to the stuff now, if you put on some rap from 1990, if you put on Run DMC, they'll sound like fucking Terry Como or Lawrence Welk. Or Dizzy Gillespie compared to the shit that they're doing now. Right. Stuff they're doing now is disruptive. You see what I'm saying? So you want to get any class, so any classical. So you got classical rap, you got classical funk. You see what I'm saying? You got classical jazz. So you just get to, uh, uh, any kind of stuff like that. Any kind of stuff like that. Now, this is another thing you want to deal with. You want to deal with 70s fusion funk jazz. We talking about Herbie Hancock, 70s jazz, Weather Report, 70s jazz, any 70s jazz, Miles Davis, Bitches Brew. Because what Miles Davis did is he changed the game up on their ass. Miles Davis said, this old shit is dead. You see, after Jimi Hendrix and Sly Stone, he was like, no, fuck that, this shit is dead. So he went to the electric mines. And all the other jazz artists after him had to follow. He's the one that actually stopped them. Because he certain, see, there's certain music that go in certain cycles. And once that cycle passed, you see what I'm saying? Once that cycle passed, Yeah, once that cycle pass, um, we'll, 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 get, we'll take it out after I do my infomercial. And they can get this stuff. <laughs> after the cycle pass, then what happens here is um, that music is no longer affected. So a new genre has to come out. So what Miles did, he made the 70s fusion jazz that most white people couldn't play. It took them years. And then they had to break it on down to spiral gyro and stuff like that so they could get back into it. And the music industry had to, you know, tell them uh, uh, uh Washington to do some fucking wine like <laughs> compared to Mr. Magic. It was commercial peace. So any 70s jazz, you see what I'm saying, where they, where they had that funk incorporated into it. The government had to, they had to really go against that. They had to try to shut that down. So what they started doing was telling the traditional people that to, to frown upon that. They could, they could frown upon it because the white people couldn't play it at first. Because it involved the funk. And you do it with the funk, the funk is melanin put to scale. It's how you do it with the funk. Even Cornell West, his first book, he, he talking about Boosie Collins and Frankie Beverly and Mays in his first book. That was in the 80s. And even now, Boosie got a, a new album. He got Cornel West. He even got Jesse Jackson up in that motherfucker. Like, it's about the form. <laughs> you with <recruit> Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So, uh, so any, any kind of thing, but to deal with your classes. But the thing is, in order to raise up, you want to get to the inner ear melody. And you can only do it. LPs can do it. If you do a CD, try to hook it up through a DVD player, but if you don't have none of that stuff, get you some professional headphones. They're, they're, if you get professional headphones, they can play on anything, but it costs about a hundred, hundred dollars. Put over, maybe one twenty or whatever. Buy it. Buy it. Now hold on a minute. We go into some stuff. We start the lecture. So, uh, <laughs> so we can get some stuff. And I'm going to a commercial. I just want to. See if I can mean, a few things that I got, got to go into. But anyway, let me go back to this Troy Davis. So, I got this thing where as, and I tell everybody that's conscious, 
When we die, we are confused. We don't know where to go. So most people will go to the light and they'll be recycled back into the reincarnation. But now the reincarnation, a lot of the reincarnation has stopped. Children is coming now, it's been in the cycle of reincarnation probably 40 years ago, just getting here. You see what I'm saying? Or 20 years ago. So the reincarnation is slowing down because that's incarceration. So what you're going to do when that person dies, like I say, you take that person, you call upon that person, you call upon the God of Numbers. You can do it two ways. The Numbers is the dog headed God in Egypt, the jackal headed God, and you say, and you, you tell your ancestor to grab him by the hand. You do this all in the realm of imagination, because imagination is the reality. This is the illusion. And then you imagine a door of light, and you say, you tell them to either follow Anubis, where the God, where he's, where he's standing upright with a male body, or you want to do one where, where he's an actual dog, it looked like a dog one pincher, but it's called a griffin. It's extinct now. It was a dog that the Egyptians knew. It could see from in front and back at the same time. It was a dog that could see behind his head and in front of his head at the same time. And that's what they made this Anubis thing from. But you want to tell that, that ancestor to grab this Anubis' hand and you have them lead them into, have them lead them into the, uh, to that door of light. And that way that soul can go where it's supposed to go. Because that's what we're going to get into tonight on what we're supposed to do and where we're supposed to be at this particular time. And you don't have to die to be there. You just got to be on a certain track. You see what I'm saying? So you want to do that to those particular ancestors and stuff like that. We'll go into a little more of that and stuff. So what happened was what I was going to do with Troy Davis, the next day, I said, well, do you want me to call the Nubis and guide him on through? They were like, no. Troy is, Troy is on it. Troy is on it. Troy is saying, damn. I should have did this in 1990. <laughs> got the hell on my body. They got a guy named Ian Longo. Ian Longo was a guy that did some stuff on the Vine calendar. Part Native American, part white boy. Had a massive heart attack in 1995. They had all these spiritual people from around the world trying to help him. He said, man, I could, I, if I want to live, I can help myself. He said, no, I'm trying to get the hell on the body here. He left. Because he saw it was on the other hand, on the other side. And so what happened was Troy, when he got to the other side, man, we was jamming the music. We was jamming the music. Troy got, he got into the groove. We parted all the way to his execution. We started at 7 because we thought he was going to die at 7. But he went on to 11 something. 11.08, I think. So we jammed the music. And he got the hell on where he's supposed to go. The night Michael Jackson died. I'm trying to show you something on how we can get in touch with people. Night Michael Jackson died. Of course, we opened up with thrill. Because that opens up the underworld. Now anytime we have a music, anytime we have any kind of jam session now, we put on thrill to open the gates. Because because he went to the other side, that means that that's a doorway. So so we started with throwing on Michael Jackson night, we ran all the hit stuff, and we started running music. That was on a, that, I think that was a, on, a, on a Friday. It was on a Friday. That Monday, me and Panic did a Michael Jackson shit on Blog Talk. Blog Talk, Underground Railroad Blog Talk, you might can still get it. It was a Blog Talk, and we did a shit, we did a thing on Michael Jackson. And that's when he tapped in. That's when he tapped in. He heard that. So he said, he said, and he said, and actually, he learned a lot about himself spiritually through the block talk he was getting down with. And he said, the night I died, I thought I heard some music, but I wasn't sure. He said, I didn't know where it was coming from. He said, so I went and hung around my family members that whole time. He said, but I found out. By the blog talk, which was international, you see, that he knew, that, that, that he knew where it come from. Let me tell you something. This is why I know that, you, that, that there's no, you can get in contact with stuff. 
He made sure that every day on his death day, we, we had a jam session. What he did, the one year anniversary, which was 010, he came and he knocked out all the lights on the street while the music was playing. And he knocked out all the lights on the street. This year, 11, I was in, I started to jam the music through the stereo headphones in the morning. He came in and did a glitch, like a power surge. And he was trying to say, I, this is a recognition. So my point here is, when we, when we get into this today with the ancestors, because that's what you're going to have to tap into, you, you must understand something that um, nothing stops. And as far as what we know now, and even Troy Davis witnessed this, that kingdom is here now. That the kingdom is here. You see what I'm saying? It's here. The kingdom is on earth right now. And your ancestors are here. You see what I'm saying? And that's what we gotta get into today, the destiny. You see what I'm saying? But I gotta, you know, I gotta chronicle this thing so we can get into this stuff here and stuff so we can have access and power now. You see. Now, one thing you need to do. Um, how many people live in a house? All right. Anybody who's in the house, what you want to do, or you can do it in an apartment too, but some people might object to it. What you want to do is, um, you want to, today is the month of Halloween, so what you want to do, a brother, one of these brothers, one of the brothers, he's semi-conscious, but he works at the post office, and he asks a little bit of questions, but I don't like to, so I let dead people lay with the dead. <laughs> you don't need to be waking somebody up, you don't want to be woke up. You see, it'd be a whole lot of trouble. You see, now your family members done got you on that shit. <laughs> so I, I throw a little hints and stuff like that, so he was like, the other week he said, yo, man, my house got broken too. So I, I ain't moved in it, but I ain't been in it two years. He said, I know the people. He said, they waited till I was off that day. He said, they waited till I left out the yard and they broke in my house. And I wanted to tell him some stuff, but I said, no, I don't know yet. And what I want to tell him, man, you need to go and get you some gargoyles. When you go to, you got Party City here. Now, Party City, you can get them now because it's Halloween. You can get you a gargoyle, but they're like 12 or $13 a piece. You get you a gargoyle, buy two of them. Put one on one side of the doorstep and one on the, another side of the step when you entry into your house. Why you think you ride around white people's house? No. They got dog dogs. No. They either got dog dogs or they got these lion type things from Anchor Wat. Asian type of uh, 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 lion. Now, let me explain what this is. So you know the energy. Before the earth was made, our earth was made out of several other primal worlds. So our earth is about 14 billion years. Our earth was formed out of several other primal worlds that existed prior to our Milky Way galaxy. And it was a whole bunch of entities that used to be, be with, it, uh, with that. Even in the Bible, you will see stuff like Lilith didn't want to bow down to Adam, so she got on back to heaven. And they sent the angels out to her. Wait a minute, hold on. It's like, but Lilith was a primal deity, and she didn't want to lay down, she didn't want Adam to lay on top of her. She said, no motherfucker, I do the fucking initiate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know. So, that's why you see a lot of Hindu statues of, of the goddesses. They sitting on the man, the man is prostrate. He laying down like he dead, and she on top of him. So Lilith, like, no, I'm a primal goddess. You see what I'm saying? You know, I'm a, I'm a black hole. So what happened was she got on back up into heaven. heavens. Anyway, what it is is this here. There were several other primal worlds and there were these what they call the old gods. Previous gods, they call them the giants. They call them the titans. They call them the asuras. You see what I'm saying? There was these old gods in the book of the dead. You'll see these monsters in these vignettes in the, in, the, in the book of coming forth by day. So those gargoyles represent those old gods. These are real entities. So the 
reason why you can't wrap your head around it is this. It's just I got to keep putting on the pants because like I said, my, I don't lost so much weight to my thing in my last belt. And then my pants actually came down in the fucking elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking and shit, but I couldn't feel nothing. Cause, you know, but that's how much weight I lost. I lost about 60 pounds. And stuff. No, no ass. I was taking them kilos, no ass at all. So, so anyway, anyway, um, you know, so anyway, um, it's not the actual, the gargoyle, it's the images of the gods in which the gargoyles represent. These images, these images of the force field. So when you put them gargoyles on your steps, the, the, you say, how are them gargoyles going to keep them niggas from breaking the house? No, they're spirits that will come. You see? So, you can go to Party City and get two of them. They might last about a year. But if you, but you know the white today, you can go, uh, you can go and spend about 40 50 $100 and get the real ones from Lowe's. I think even on Home Depot might have them. That's the, you see what I'm saying? Now, they got one that's, that's, that's another one they got. It costs about $20 at Target. But they will only put one out. So they'll put one out, and then you gotta go to another party to get the other. <laughs> they know what they're doing. Yeah. So you go to Party City, and you can get you can get two of them for like twelve or thirteen, fourteen dollars a piece, and put them in front of your house. And get, so when I got the ones from um, the ones about two years ago, I got them from Party City. I put them in, the, in front of the house. And I had a dream. Somebody was coming in the house, and they had a gun in their hand, and I ran them and jammed the door and snatched the gun, the drink, caught the arm in the door, snatched the gun out, pulled the door over and shot him in the head. And this is the night I put down the ball balls. So what it was actually saying was, is this. And I'll explain what this means. Uh, and so this time when we bought the new ones about two weeks ago, we come up, we woke up the next morning after we put them down, our mailbox was laying out the damn truck. <laughs> So let me explain what happens with this and how stuff gets broke in. There's certain energies and frequencies, and low energies will attract a burglar. So a burglar just don't break in your house. There's a certain low energy around your house or something, and spirits, you see what I'm saying, that attracts the burglar to break in. You see? So when I saw the dream the first time when I caught the hand in the door, that was actually those spirits being dealt with. This time, when we got the new statues, they bigger. Whatever the spirit was was a much more malevolent force. And it was so mad, it chopped down the fucking mailbox and threw the shit in the street. Because <laughs> it was mad. The first time we had this incident, you get some stuff called Crayola. C-R-O-E-O-L-E-N, or L-I-N, Crayola. C-R-E-A-L-I-N, I think, Crayola, or I-N-E-N, Crayola. And you mop your clothes, and whatever's in your house got to get the fuck out. You see? You don't have, if you have a carpet and you can put it in four corners or wipe down some walls or wipe down a table or something. It smells like, um, it smells like a permanent magic marker. Yeah. And they got to get out. So that's the first time we put down the Crayola and they were so mad they knocked over some candles and some bottles but they had to get out with those spirits. So this time we got up on, on, on the Equinox, the night before Roy Davis. And let me say, I got, a, I got a mop and I got a dust. And she went in there and found that Crayola and, and wiped it down, wiped the floors, mopped the floors, with her hardwood floors. I said, well, you know the day is equal. She said, I didn't know that. She said, that's why they got me up to clean up. Also, they knew the truck, they was going to do that ritual. So get you some gargoyles and put them in front of your house. See, you, you see, when you go by white people, how they got them gargoyles, it's not because of that. And why the hell do you think gargoyles is okay? Gargoyles are evil because we all scared of shit. If gargoyles are so evil, why are they on all churches? Why are they on all churches? 
It takes a week. You see what I'm saying? You see, let me go to my infomercial so we can take a break. So y'all can get some of this stuff. And then we'll start the next one when we come back. <laughs> let me go to my infomercial first now. Don't take no break yet. No, no, it ain't, ain't no, it's not break time. Not break time. No. Don't go to, no, not break time. No. This, the lecture's still going on. I didn't say go to no break. Y'all gotta follow instructions. You see? Look. Okay, I'm gonna show you something else too. So I got this too, I'm gonna explain what this is too. You have to get you some of these right here. Man of steel. Man of steel. That's, that's a part of the lecture. I got this, I got this the other day from the spirit stuff. She got a cape on the back. <laughs> I'm going to show you what that is in a few minutes. Tell you what that's all about. Tell you what that's all about. That's all about you. It's all about you. Y'all all right? Mm -mm. This is all about you. All right. Let me, let me do something right quick. Let me do something. Okay. We produced this. And we've been having a pretty good time with it. Been having a pretty good time with it. First of all, uh, let, me, let, me deal, let me deal with this since it came up. Obviously, they wanted me to deal with it.
It's a snow kill. They're going to put it in the water for the next 10 years to kill you off. It's correction. And what it does is it directly attacks the gun. Now, dealing with this, the don't know I'm talking about coming from the Star Series. The people that put this together, the transmission, it was supposed to be serious, man. But they sent another transmission down and said Superman. Because the secret societies follow the star series. They got that from the Moors. The Moors of Spain. They follow the star series. There's a, a star in every lodge. The black uh, masons don't know nothing about this. You know, there ain't no drinking, licking, driving cows. <laughs> Fish fries. Oh, the 32, 32 degrees of 32 years of Jesus. Jesus never existed. It's the 32 vertebrae of the spine. It rises you to a higher level, a kundalini force. You see what I'm saying? 32 years of Jesus. No, it's the 32 or 33 vertebrae. But the 32 and 33 came down. 33, 33 years. So it's the 33 uh, vertebrae of the spine that raises you to a higher perpendicular, the kundalini energy. It raises the third eye, which is, uh, is, is serious on earth. So it's supposed to be a serious man, but they sent another transmission and they called it the Superman because the secret societies at that time, they was all dealing with the serious stuff. What they was talking serious was in, in every lodge. So what it was is they make sure that these people, they didn't come in and ransack the comic thing or either kill these people and get rid of it. They called it Superman. But it's the star series and that's our symbol. That's why, that's why, I went to Walmart, was lucky enough to find these. The Man of Steel. Box, the Man of Steel. Who is the Man of Steel? Ogun, the God of Steel, the God of Iron. You see what I'm saying? That's why music in the clubs, what we used to go to, was so important the jam off the club music because the DJs used to mix with what? They call it the wheels of steel. That's why a DJ would become the thing that replaced musicians in the future with the rap. It was a powerful force. You see what I'm saying? The wheels of steel, so the man of steel. So what you want to do is you want to get you some of these. <laughs> go, to, go to Walmart. They got the Superman product. Now they got a store. They got a store up there called the Spirit Store. They just opened up a Halloween. Yeah, y'all yeah, seen it? Yeah, yeah. They open up in vacant uh, stores. They got these, I got this the other day. This shit got a little kick of kids. <laughs> <laughs> Since I lost weight, this shit fit. <laughs> you see? This shit fit. You know, go, go there, go there. I think I can pay like $17 for this shit at the spirit store. But you can go on on. Um, DCComics.com and they got all these things. But you can get, they got a whole nother line of Superman stuff at Walmart. I don't care about it. Yeah. So you want to get some of these. But also what you want to do, you brothers, you want to get you some of these. <laughs> and then you want to go and get you some, a can of beer called Steel Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> called Steel Reserve. You want to drink that Steel Reserve. With these man of steel draws. <laughs> Call on Ogun. They bring some steel. They throw some Superman on ass. Now what you can do, you go and buy your t-shirt, you can really get this book. Not boots in that t-shirt. <laughs> You'd be surprised how shit works. It's ritual. But this shit right here, and a can of that steel reserve. <laughs> My man Shabazz told me to get the steel reserve about four years ago, about three years ago. I said, ah. But a man in Chicago said, man, he said, I went out and got some steel reserve. Because I thought, oh, who? He said, I drank that shit and went to another level. And shit. So I drank a can of steel reserve and woke up. And shit was, the, the color was looking like a pyramid. <laughs> well, a new <little> pyramid. <laughs> My Johnson ain't so, so long. So, you want to get this, that, that, you want to go to, at least get the 
draw. <laughs> now, you know, remember our women, now, you know, back in the, in the, in the mid, mid 80s, they started coming out with underwear for women that looked like men. So you're going to get you some man of steel and stuff like that. Get on it. This part, this, this spirit store, go there, it's Halloween store, and they got, they sell the needs now. So get you some of that shit, because that's our stuff. That's our stuff. Get that steel reserve bill for some, doing some real business. Now, now, this is the infomercial. Then we're going to go to a break. Y'all all right? All right. Okay. First, we are selling this, and it's been working out. It's been working out very good. Let me see. How does this go? Let me see how does this go. Hold on. Yeah. That's it. This is a magic mirror to open the third eye. Um, we've, been, we've been selling these, we've been selling these magic mirrors. You don't have to stand up if the baby ain't crying. You can sit back down. I just, oh, okay. You don't want to banish you, but. <laughs> the magic mirror. Now these magic mirrors, uh, we got them for sale here today. And what happened was they used to have these mirrors in Egypt. And they sell these mag magic mirrors, everybody know about the witch stuff. And um, Nostradamus and them would look into these mirrors, um, um, look into these particular mirrors. Now, it ain't going to work the way it is with the, just the paper. But you want to do this, get this magic mirror, and you start strengthening your third eye by looking into it. Looking into it. Now, what you want to do, um, we also have a CD that you can get also tonight. It's called a Magical Womb CD. So these people put together this stuff for the womb. But they wanted to see, well, we were trying to talk about a cosmic womb. A cosmic womb. Well, since Isis is the soul of Sirius, and that's her sister, Neptune's, and you got Anubis down here, and you got Horus, what I did was, in the Eye of Ahuak, that we put back several things where they used to have on the temple wall, they would have a mirror and they would have this hieroglyphics around it. And the hieroglyphics and all that would bring the certain energies through. But we have this, and we also have, uh, we also have a, uh, uh, we also have a, um, the womb CD where they went out into space. NASA recorded these sounds of space. So these two people put it into a womb CD with a little bit of synthesized stuff, but it's actually space music. So if you listen to that womb CD and you look into that mirror, you can start enhancing that third eye. You also have, you can get this one for money. We got a Ganesha CD. Ganesha is the elephant deity which removes all obstacles. So we have a CD you play. You can look into the third mirror, third eye mirror, because not only can you not only enhancing the third eye, but you can get prosperity by looking in that mirror and wishing for, upon what you want. So you look at your third eye, you play the Vanessa CD, and prosperity will come. What we used to do is put it on the stereo, put it on repeat, and leave the house, and it played for two, three hours, and we come back the next day, all kind of money start coming in, phones start ringing. So Vanessa removes obstacles, brings, um, brings prosperity, or uh, brings prosperity. So we have that also tonight. We have the stimulus package. We got those still for the people that heard about the stimulus package. You see what I'm saying? We got the stimulus package, angelic stimulus package. We got the purple disc. We got that for sale. Um, we got all that tonight is if people want to get those things. The stimulus package, third, uh, and then we also have this. We also have this. Which is um this. Now, let me explain what this is. Explain what this is. A lot of old churches have built into their churches a labyrinth. Labyrinth is very spiritual. It's also built in the system of melanin. Melanin is also a labyrinth. They had a labyrinth in Egypt that Herodotus 
the Greek historian talked about it. It was a big ass temple in Egypt that was a labyrinth. That was a labyrinth. This is the design of what it looked like put back based on them reading the descriptions from Herodotus histories. He visited the labyrinth. Now this thing is supposed to be a big, a big huge labyrinth temple. Very spiritual. They have located the ground where the labyrinth used to be. So most buildings, if it was a building, there would be some part of the room in that would still be there. This building, they can't find nothing. The actual building has disappeared. There's no evidence. They know they got the evidence of where the labyrinth was. They got the evidence uh, of the area, everything. But the building is gone. We believe the building, because it was a labyrinth, very spiritual building, it went into another dimension. We believe that dimension now, that labyrinth is in the west. It might be invisible, but it's in the west. So the spirit world said, because we got a depiction of the labyrinth, is to put the Egyptian stuff back into the labyrinth, the motifs. And in this labyrinth here, if you look real close, in the doorway you will see the three stars of Orion's belt. And the star Sirius is right here, which is the biggest star, looking out the window. So as a result, as a result, we want you to get a hold of this labyrinth today and put it in your house. Now, what might happen? At a certain time, because we're going all the way to this 2012 stuff, which is these dimensions imploding. It ain't uh, the, 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 the time over like they sing it. But what it is is these dimensions, but it's also you going to another level of spirituality. Okay? So now, you put this ladder in your house, you might walk to a room one day and open the door, and you might be in Paris. They got shit like that. You know, you might be in Paris. Remember the movie Jumpers? Yeah. Like a jump site? You see what I'm saying? So you want to get a hold of this, 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 this ladder in the kitchen and put it in your house. You see what I'm saying? Or even if you don't be in Paris, you might put the labyrinth itself might put your house in another dimension. And another dimension means you now have an energy capable of healing, capable of learning, capable of a certain energy in your house. You want to put the third eye mirror up in your house because that third eye mirror, in all honesty, is a, a doorway. Any kind of mirror is a doorway to another dimension. You see what I'm saying? So you want to put this, so we got the third eye mirror. So we want you to get the ladder, the third eye mirror, we want you to get the womb CD. I want you to get the womb CD um, and the Ganesha CD for the prosperity. You see what I'm saying? Now you can buy the stuff separately, you can buy a package with all of it. So we want to deal with that type of stuff now too. So um, what we want to do is, and like I said, I got the purple disc, I got the, uh, um, I got the, um, uh, the angelic stimulus package, we got all that stuff too. With the spiritual check, you know, the check in the seals and stuff. Because this angelic force is now here. So the currency, you might have more, fair more with a currency with the angelic realm. Dealing with it. You see what I'm saying? Then dealing with that dollar bill that they just downloaded. Downgraded it. See, not only did they downgrade it, they, they waited to, 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 they downgraded it on Obama, on Obama. But not only did they downgrade it, but what they did here is sometimes when they downgrade it, we talk about magic. You see what I'm saying? They also talk about the country being devalued to a certain point. See, the whole thing with the Illuminati and all that is to ramshack this whole country where England can be supreme. You see what I'm saying? Because the Federal Reserve is chartered out of England, which is in charge of all this shit. Anybody seen that um, Ray Hagen one? You said it to me. Who's in charge of the Federal Reserve? Anybody seen that shit? That's when that was one of his best. And stuff like that. So sometimes you, you want to get stuff of prosperity 
that might not necessarily be monetary, but the prosperity can set you up for monetary, but it'll come certain ways. So that's what that spiritual check does. So like I said, we got the purple disc and we got all that. So we're going to take a break. The people that um, is interested in um, purchasing this, you can come through. And all, you know, I should have, if I could have got a manufacturer, I should have got some of these. I could have sold them the hell of a <laughs> And then we go go into the lecture and get into the crux of what we get destined. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Some good ass tea, boy. <laughs> We on? We on. We on. Okay. Okay, so we back. Oh shoot, give me say, let me go, let me go pay the water bill. <laughs> anyway, you cut that off.
what you call it, out of Ireland. It was talking about running the snake people out of Ireland, the Egyptians. You see. So Ramadan, which was the time to, to, to get the energies from dog days, which is the serious star system rises on dog days. Uh, rises on dog days. That's where that, that, that Superman S comes from. And like I said before, and so after, after Islam came in, they, they just did it with the whole Muhammad thing and whatever festival they do, you see. So they tell you that we only worship Allah, one God, but they, so the, the, the multiple many aspects of the one God in Egypt, which is called the one God of the God one, when you see the multiple deity system, it becomes um, the Neteru. But it was always called the one God and the God one in Egypt. So in Islam, they had the same thing. They had the multiple deity system. So they didn't say, we worship only Allah. But so what happened to all the deity? They just said, well, those are 99 attributes of Allah. So those, those gods come in the attributes. Well, hell, that's all the gods was in Egypt, was the attributes of the one God and the God one. You see. So they, you know, uh, so, uh, so it's never a, a, a polytheism system. So, in, so the, the, the one God and the God one in Hebrew and Christianity, when they say the one God, what happened to the multiple deities? The multiple deities, Neteru, becomes the angels. You see? Becomes the angels. You see? Um, I'm going to put my little thing, my little up here for TV land and stuff. So you can, you can, if you ever want to get some of that stuff to talk today, you can always you know, call the number. Call the number and all. And you want to have, like I said, I would employ you to get this, the picture packet. We, we gotta set it over the mail because like, it's it's too heavy to carry in the uh it's seventy it's about seventy pictures, poster size, eleven by seventeen. And it's got all the Egyptian gods, all the Europe deities, Native Americans, Chinese, um the angelic host, it's got um all the Indian gods, it's got everything you might need. It's got all the Egyptian temples, it's got the Mayan calendar, so it's got the old man head, so it's over seventy pictures. It is worth getting. It is worth getting and stuff and all that. So let's say if you buy a picture packet and you tap into a deity, and you say, well, I want to have a picture, an image of that deity, you could just get, you could just go in your picture packet and have an image of that deity. You could make an altar out of it. You know, you might want to go and pick a whole room and put it around the whole room. You see, so certain things you can do with it. You see what I'm saying? Like one sister, she got it, and when Hanneman came, she said, Hanneman, stop doing the face. Now, I don't want to scare you. But what was Hanuman doing, the monkey god? He was trying to express his power. Now, let me give you an example. We got a, a Tara altar. Tara is another one of the ancient goddesses from Tibet. She, she comes out of India. She ends up in Tibet. Tara. She's also uh, represented as a female Buddha. Tara is a female Buddha. So, what happens here is we built a tarot altar. And so we built the tarot altar, and, and so we had to feed tarot um, um, brandy. She's going to drink a whole glass of brandy. Mm -hmm. And usually the goddesses don't really deal with the look, they don't really take the look like the, like the gods do. But she drank that brandy. Mm -hmm. And so we did it for a month, and then when my mother made the transition, she was the one that helped my mother facilitate to go to the next level. And that's why she was drinking that brandy. As a matter of fact, I think it was a part of my mother's energy that was drinking the brandy. Because my mother spontaneously human combusted and went to the other room. We'll go into that in a few minutes when I go into what's her whereabouts now and what she's doing. She's ruling a whole sector. That's what we're talking about the destiny. So we're talking about, and, and so, so we just finish this thing. So we got a tarot altar. Then I built a Ganesha altar with tons and tons of Ganeshas. And we go to Ross. Ross has these Ganesha statues. And, we, and so, they have some the last couple years. They might still have some. And we got all these statues, you, you know. And so we got this enormous amount of these Ganesha. And, and so, when, once we put that Ganesha altar up, Tara will turn her body, her statues, facing Ganesha. And so Linda said, Baba, did you move these statues? I said, no. 
And so we turn them back and she'll turn them around again. Now what they're trying to say here is this. When they go to the kingdom, they got these heads on Easter Island. You ever see big heads on Easter Island? When they ask the locals, how did you all move those heads to the sea? Because they're, they're, I think they're facing inward to protect the islanders from any evil forces. They say, how did you all move those heads from the sea? They say, we don't even see no trees on this island. So they did geographical surveys and stuff, and they say, well, they, they come to find out they never have had any trees. They say, because most of the, their speculation is they put these big things on trees and push them, roll them. But when they asked the Easter Islanders, how did they move those statues? They say those statues walked and put themselves in place. These big 100-ton statues, they say they walked there. Now, knowing what I see with a little small statue, when Ganesha turns herself to the Lord's face, no, when uh, Tara turns herself to face Ganesha, if they could do that in my house, I'm damn so sure when those natives said that they walked there, see, the Europeans can't put their mind around it. You see, with this rational thought. To this day, it's like Asa Hilliard said, to this day, they have no idea how the Great Pyramids of Mexico and the Great Pyramids of Ancient Egypt was built. They got a hundred years of speculation and they don't know to this day. They had the technology for those stones to float in place. Now, the Temple of Angkor Wat in Vietnam, they found a guy that was living there who was a reincarnation that was around when they built the temple in the 8th century. He's living there today. He said, well, when I was in another life, he said, it was me, some other people from Kamiya society. He said, Shiva, Vishnu, Ganesha, and a bunch of Hindu gods, we work together to build the temple. He's saying, this, this, this temple is a model of the cow stables in heaven. So basically, they, the, the entities transferred those stones. You see what I'm saying? So if I could see that happening in my house, like we got some terracotta warriors. And the other day, one of the terracotta warriors was standing out here. We got them all together. One of the ter terracotta warriors had moved and was standing out in the middle of the damn floor. She said, did you move? I said, I ain't touched that thing. So we're talking spirit. So when we talk about go get the gargoyles, it's the energy of them old gods that's around them gargoyles that can protect them. So I wanted to tell the brother from the post office, man, go get you a set of gargoyles. But I guess a catch you can do with niggas. <laughs> Soon as they laugh, you go. That's all you gotta do. You ride by them white people's house, they got gargoyles. See, once you say white people do, our people fall in line. <laughs> so you ever go by them white people's house? We told them to get the reefs. They got year-round reefs. You go around the rich people's house, they got a reef on their door. So the energy can come through the prosperity and stuff, they can get do the reef year round. There's a book, a witch's book called Magical Household by Scott Cunningham. Tell you all the stuff you do like that. Magical Household, Scott Cunningham. This is a magical month. Now, this is the month where the ancestors come to visit. The doorway opens between the two worlds. Now my queen Linda is from Washington, D.C. And she tells the story how she went to a party and the party was packed. Was packed, full of people partying down. And then she said, she, that she went outside with her friend. They was talking outside. And when they came back in, wasn't no more than six or seven people in the party. That means that all those people, they didn't see nobody come out. That means that all those people was ancestors. And they was dancing with them and everything just like you and I. So that's a doorway that opens. That's a doorway that opens. Now, this October the 16th is, is called the Duvali Festival in India. That's the goddess of prosperity locks on, on Lakshmi. And that is that is biggest Halloween, New Year's. Now that's the biggest Christmas, New Year's, and Fourth of July in India. 
It's also a celebrate a God called El Cristo Negro in Puerto Rico, the risen black Christ, you see, on that same day. That was the day in, in April 16, um, 1993, I met the angel Awas. We're going to go in this angelic thing in a minute. Um, um, angel Awas. White people have been looking for Awas since 1904. He's a form of Horus. But when he came back, he came back in the, he came back to the ghetto. He, he came back to the gods. You see, he came back to the gods. We are the gods. And it's a difference now when the when the European is studying the information, he got a lot of information. He got a lot of information. He's studying the information, but he's always studying the information from the outside. He's not studying the information from the inside as the gods. That is the difference, and that's what's the difference between you and other people. You are the gods. And so the destiny here is we got to bridge this gap tonight and bring it home personal so that we can start functioning on that particular level. Level of living magically. You've already, some of you have already done it when you're able to bypass um, 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 poverty, which means you don't have money coming in, but your lifestyle is ain't no big deal. You know what I mean? You know, I, I, you know, you rob Peter to pay Paul. You see what I'm saying? You know how to juggle shit. You see? But one of the magical things of juggling here is this. The more you give, the more you receive. See what I'm saying? So anytime, so now, now back in 94, every time I would give a person on the street 50 cents, I walk in the, in the store, be 50 cents short. Give on a dollar, the dollar starts to spread, say you don't supposed to give it to them right now. And then there's a time when there's a cycle where as you see them people out there bumming, those are the angels. Now, I'm alive and homicide, there'll be an angel on each corner. We ain't seen no angels on each corner, but we got a damn black man on each corner. <laughs> and I don't give a damn where you go in this United States. You're going to see some brother on the corner. Every now and then you'll see a sister. But most of it's them brothers. They're like permanent fixtures and light poles. But we start giving them. You see? The more you give, any of them you give it to the angels. You give, you give it to the angels. We gave one guy, we started giving him this stuff, and when we pull up, he said, I see, he said, I see Jesus in y'all. So he was, that's the way he thought of it. He was seeing the gods. He says, in your eyes. You see, like that. Because he was seeing the stuff, you know. So, and you got to realize, anybody who ain't got nothing, you see what I'm saying, is the freest motherfucker on the planet. So they had lost it all, so they don't. Once you give up, you see? So when I, get, when I went on the three-week fast, I said, fuck it, I give up. You see what I'm saying? And, all, and so, like I said, you know, I got off the meat for three weeks, and the angels came. Then I, then, I, then, I, then I went on the fast. You see, cause it, now it takes about 40 days to get your coat, get the stuff off your coat. But because I have been for the last eight years been cleaning out every week, me and, me and Linda, every week we clean out the center tea. So it only took three weeks because I was in a habit. Plus, I had been on Ramadan one meal a day after sundown since June. So I did three months of Ramadan. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, when it happened and stuff, it only took three weeks. You see, it uh, only, only took three weeks, you see, to do it. So, um, but, um, so, but the more you give, the more you give, the more you can receive. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, um, um, so another, like I said now, limit the amount of soy you eat. Because soy gives brain poison. And it gives and it cuts and it, and, it, and, it, and it cuts down the pineal gland. That's why if you go in the grocery store, soy is in everything. 
chewing gum, all your breads, so I left it. All your cookies, they do it because it, it preserves stuff. Because what, what's for? Saw is best they make plastic out of soil. So if you want to preserve something for shelf life, you put the soil lethargen in it, and it preserves it because you turn it into plastic. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you got to limit the amount of soil. You can eat it, but you can't eat it as a, you see what I'm saying? And on, see, the last time I was a vegetarian, that was being in my diet. You see what I'm saying? This time I'm vegan and stuff like that. And you can barely get stuff without soil, but you got to limit what you do. You see what I'm saying? You got to limit the intake. But you know, they got it in toothpaste. Everything in this country is soy-based products. That's because they're trying to shut down the pineal gland. You see what I'm saying? They're trying to shut down the pineal gland. You see? Uh, and stuff like that. So you just got to limit stuff. And like I said, you got to drink more water. So let me give you the, 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 the diet again for the, for the pineal before we go into the stuff. Um, let's see. Let me give you the diet for the pineal again. So, uh, so you know, um, melanin food, beer, barley, hops, barley, you see, vitamin E, alfalfa, chamomile, water, tart cherry juice. You see what I'm saying? Ch tart cherry juice. Cherries, blueberries, grapes. Now you gotta just get you gotta get the just juice. You can't get the grapes with with no um, high fructose corn syrup. You see, because that shuts down the, the cells in it, the sugar. So you get that Kadeem, the Kadeem grape juice with the juice drink. But just the, the, the you know in the health food store, so the health food section, they got just cherry, pure cherry, pure grape, Concord grape. You get those and stuff, and that's 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 good for the melanin. You see, uh, that's good for the melanin. Um, um, um. But like I said, um, the Kadeem is, is the one that the Jews uh, uh, start drinking and stuff like that. Um, black beans, like I said, is one. Um, is it, one and stuff like that. But then again, um, I don't know. You, you start going near 50 and stuff like that and shit. You know, the beans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know. You just bought a tank of gas and you don't need no more. <laughs> you know, you know, like that and all. So that whole thing is going down. Uh, you know, and, and, and like I said in New York, um, the, one of the last things is um, uh, going to the Y. Eat, uh, 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 what people know, I'm talking about, um, in this particular case, it's the, uh, going down on that woman opens the third eye. If you know what I mean by that. Now, what does that mean? Because the vagina it emits some stuff called collars. And collars are a form of melanin. Um, and, um, collars are a form of melanin. And it's a source and stuff. So, um, um, that also opens the third eye. That also opens the third eye if you, if you do that. You know, so that's a whole other subject and stuff. Um, that's, that's a, you see. That's a whole other subject. Now, I said this, and so well, I wanted to uh, talk about this again because they just finished up 10 years of Smallville. Smallville was a Superman growing up in the small town of Kansas called Smallville as a boy up into adult. So they finished 10 years, but the last year, which was um, the first of 2011, in the spring of 2011, and well, the season was um, the fall 2010, spring 2011. The last season, which is 10, which was the 10th season, it's gonna it's gonna come out on box set in October. They did one special where they showed what Superman was. They had an Egyptian exhibit come to town. Lois Lane went to the exhibit, and they had an Isis or Aset necklace, and she took the necklace. I think she took it because she was a reporter, so she stole the necklace to go and report on it. She was going to bring it back to the exhibit. You see what I'm saying? But in the process of taking the necklace and putting it in her bag, she got possessed by our set, Isis. And Isis led her back to the museum to get a, 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 a vase, a, con, a canop, canopic jar with the ashes of Osiris in it. Then she took Superman, Clark Kent, 
and tied him up and forced him into a sarcophagus. And then she did a ritual to bring Osiris back into, uh, 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 bring Osiris down into Clark Kent, a Superman's body. So she did the ritual, they completed the ritual, and then always, they always stopped the ritual in the show. But when she did the ritual, she was actually doing the ritual, it was actually showing you the lowest lane in Superman is Isis and Osiris mm -hmm. in the last show. Mm -hmm. Now on the tenth season, and this is what your destiny is here. Superman never flew in, in, the, in the ten years of Smallville. He flew the last show, the final show, he flew. But it, he went to his Superman's portrait somewhere in Antarctica or wherever it is. And he was asking his father who talked to him through crystals, who encoded the crystals before the planet from Krypton blew up. He said, why can't I fly yet? Because he had a cousin named Kira that came in a, in a couple of seasons and she could fly. He said, why can't I fly yet yeah, like Kira? And his father, Jarrell, said to Cal el Elohim, the El. <laughs> Cal el is, is Superman's name. Cal el His father said, you can't fly because you, as far as you, still think you're human. Okay? What they're trying to say, that's the talk about you. The reason why you can't do shit. Because you still think you're human. <laughs> now, when I was with Ginger, this was back in 1996, I was talking to the spirit world through her because she was channeling. And I said, well, why can't this happen? And what, why can't that happen? The spirit world came down and they said the same thing they said. They said, are you still thinking you that boy from Mullen, South Carolina? That's your fucking problem. <laughs> you a God and you still thinking you Bobby Hinnon. And the life that you live up to this particular point. And that's not a problem we have. These events are personality. And we can't break those events because that's the only life we know. We can't remember the God part before incarnation. We still think it be human. I can't do that. Look. The earthquake struck the Washington Monument. Okay? <laughs> Tore that shit up. <laughs> Damage it. Two or three months before, they had a show come on NBC called The Events. And the aliens sent them a message. If y'all don't behave, the aliens blew up the Washington Monument. Three months, three months later, they took that show off. That show was not coming back. <laughs> that RV, they were dropping. Yeah. Two months later, Three months later, that earthquake hit the Washington Monument. Now, as soon as that shit hit, Jeb Bush came on TV. He told, Jeb Bush came on TV. Don't sweat on electronics and shit. Don't put this thing in your pocket, cell phone. Now, Linda, I put this thing in my pocket, and immediately they came to me and said, take, the, take, take that goddamn cell phone out of the pocket. That's the spirit. Because that radiation, fuck your shit up down there. <laughs> don't never put this, don't even put it on a belt near your goddamn gonads. Near your Johnson. Your tabby Your dipstick. <laughs> don't put these, that's radiation. You know, and you catch a case of the blue balls and it be a year and you can't get rid of it. <laughs> now, Jeb Bush came, came on TV after the monument. He said, you people is running for president. He said, whatever you do, he said, you all need to stick to the issue, but you need to stop talking shit about Obama. Mm -hmm. Jeb Bush, yeah. the George Bush brother, See what I'm saying? He said, you need to stop talking shit about Obama. He said this. Now what is Jeb Bush concerned about that? Because they were saying, look, you talking shit about Obama, you upset these black people. These black people get mad 
shit happens like the earthquake in the morning. The earthquake, the earthquake. So they know in order for shit not to mess up, they got to keep you docile. You don't want to make them mad. Remember Farrakhan told them? Back in the power to it, if your slave go to war with you, your slave will win. See? Just based on your energy. So they got to keep you dead. And so Jeb Bush came out and said, hey, you got to cut this out. Because here go again. They don't know their gods. But they got that energy in them. You see? Now why did they say that? Before Larry King went off, he had Barbara Bush and George Bush Sr. on. And they asked him, what do you think about Barack Obama? They said, he's a fine Man, he's a great man, he's a fine man. They was like, what shit, he gonna talk about your soul? They said, no, we ain't got no complaints. He's a fine and great man. First of all, they're all related. Right. That's the first thing. You don't get up in there now unless it's a royal family deal. That's the first thing. So when Jeb Bush was saying, he said, you need to stop talking shit about my cousin. <laughs> Dick Cheney, all of us related. That's a family thing. That's a family thing. And they take that shit all the way back to Queen Charlotte, who was screwed by who or more. Mm. So the black, the black bloodline is throughout the whole royal family. Go back to Queen Charlotte. You go to Charlotte, North Carolina, they got a, they got a, they got a statue near the airport that's white, they got one downtown, got nappy here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Queen Charlotte, who was a, a, a Moorish offspring. See that stuff, you see. They got to think if you go to visit, if you go to Spain, you can't go and go in the library and study nothing unless you're a Spanish citizen. That's because they don't want you to study the Moors. Mm. The Moors were your pirates. That's what you know. That the whole history of the pirates was the Moors. I'm looking, I'm going through, I'm going through Target the other day, and I look over there and they got a little display where they got music you can listen to on the wall, or easy to listen to music. And I saw something say, Scottish Moors. I said, wait, ain't that what that Braveheart story was about? Well, if we can't kill them out, we'll breathe them out. I said, that's some more shit. Scott. You see, we know that the alcohol was brought up by the Moors. That was Scotch whiskey. You see? And all, you see? So, um, we know this. So my point here, so somebody need to go to Scotland and go in their libraries and see some history since you can't go to Spain. You see what I'm saying? So my point is they, they hold that whole bloodline go back to the Moors. You see, and maybe that's why they declared war on Islam because they mad about the Queen Charlotte thing. See what I'm saying? About the Queen Charlotte thing. So um, a couple of things too. Um, to show you we in Marlowe, there's a guy got shot in Chicago this summer, point blank range in the back of the head by the police. And the bullet did not penetrate his skull. He had a headache. <laughs> but the bullet did not penetrate his skull. Brother Andrew called me from Chicago and said, that just got shot point blank range in the back of the head by the police and the bullet didn't penetrate his skull. You see, so the problem here is, remember the bumble bumblebee that can fly they can't fly because his body, the wingspan. You know, I, you know, really, I'm not gonna start quoting that. I'm gonna tell you why. Cause the white man always make these determine how the fuck he know. <laughs> well, his wingspan, based on the proportion of his body, he 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 can't fly, but he, but because of um, he don't know he flies anyway. Well, motherfucker, a gorilla is a vegetarian and he's stronger than anything on earth. <laughs> you say I need meat for shrimp. Well, what about a man gorilla? Better get that, that Planet of the Age movie. That shit on bootleg clip. <laughs> you see. But a gorilla is a fucking vegetarian. And age vegetarians too. You know, they can kill you with their tail or fucking, you know. So where did this shit come from? You know, so, but my point here is, again, we still think we human. I'm going to go into some things in a few minutes. I just want to get through a few things 
I want to get to uh, 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 a few things. Um, uh, so you don't need to follow this Obama thing because Obama took this job. His assignment was to take the job out of the country failed so that they could blame it on him. But he's cool with that because that was his assignment from the beginning. That's why he never gets mad. And that's the only time he ever raised his voice when we went to the Congressional Black Caucus and, and called us, get off your, take off your house shoes. Right. Right. You know, somebody should have stood up, but I think the people were so baffled, right. so taken back by it. Somebody should have said, look, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> See what I'm saying? 
saying. My grandmama was equivalent to a millionaire in the sense she was a thousandaire, but equivalent to the money she had. When mama was a school teacher, she was a school teacher, and she got his money, my grandfather's money, all that money. We were rich. See what I'm saying? Uh, we, we was rich and stuff. So I grew up wealthy. You see, and for, for me growing up wealthy, when I didn't have, it didn't mean nothing to me. Because I never knew my time when I didn't have. So when I started lecturing and I stopped having, it didn't mean shit. See what I'm saying? Because I see a lot of people, if they grow up poor, they never can shake that that they gotta get that money because they missed out on that. I missed out on nothing because I never I never not had. So even then when I didn't have it, the, the, the frame of mind is I'm still wealthy. <laughs> it's a mindset. All, all the wealth is a mindset. So the rule man said, yeah, your grandfather, he was a carpenter, and he was working on a woman's house, and the man came home, he was a cop, working for the and the man thought he was, was messing up with his wife and put roots on it. My mama said, what? You see? And he said, that's how he died. You see, so we know about this shit down there. So, to make a long story short, the guy said, yeah, Michelle Obama, mama come over here all the time. She's a practitioner. Mm -hmm. She knows all about the herbs. So Barack Obama said, oh, I'm going to the White House. They, they might try to kill a nigga. I'm going to bust a rule. I'm going to move the goddamn witch up in the house. And we're going to build a garden in the backyard. So I don't have to even sneak it to no Metallica. We're going to grow the goddamn herbs in the roots right in the backyard. Yeah. On a fucking White House. And the wife came there from South Carolina to keep that nigga living. That's why she up in there because she's a root woman. Uh, and Barack Obama said, no, fuck that. I'm bringing the goddamn witch with me. <laughs> and, and, and Michelle and them, they said, no, we're going to we gonna fly that backyard up. We're going to grow all those little shit you need so you won't be caught going in the little hocus pocus shots and leading it back to the hot what you call So we're going to grow all the little shit and we're going to put those vegetables on top with all the little roots that you know. Yeah. She's a practitioner. She grew up in that shit. They grow that shit, and that's how Barack Obama was saved. Yeah. I was gonna keep that a secret, but since you wanna act ugly, <laughs> but that's what happened. That was the move why he moved her in the damn White House. And the guy, when, when, when Andrew went to the guy's house, the guy explained all that shit about her. She he said she comes over, she studies all this stuff, and she's a practitioner. I said, yeah, she's from South Carolina. That's the Gullah people, that's the Yoruba village down there. Georgetown, that's the, you know, I grew up with all that shit. And she was raised in that shit. So what she did, Barack Obama said, bust the move on that back yard. And plow up that shit and talk about all this, teaching people how to eat. No, she go back there and get the fucking herbs. And they do the juju, and the crackers don't know what else. <laughs> Stay alive. <laughs> See what I'm saying? And that's what the grandma there for. Mm -hmm. I'm telling the damn secret. Yeah. You see? Because my boy, you see, he, he knows he went to college with, with the girl in the community or something. They grew up together, so he, 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 he knows the upper echelon people, so he ended up with the house beside Barack Obama, and the guy told him the whole scene. He said, Yeah, she's the grandmama over here all the time, or the mother, you know, over here all the time. Michelle, uh, yeah, that's a fucking geeky. Right. You see what I'm saying? That's the, that's the damn teaching and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so I I, just wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I have to uh, shake that stuff. Now, on the October the 16th, it's supposed to be a uh, there's supposed to be a comment coming called Element on October. The 16th. That's the big lottery day. And it's coming called Ellen, and I don't know why they took the him off. But they, they don't, nothing they do is by mistake. Mm -hmm. Nothing they do is by mistake. So it's coming on Ellen, and, and also Nibiru is supposed to show up. Now, Nibiru corresponds to uh, the 12th planet or whatever, but it's also called Nebhe Ru, the pine needle gland. So that's why we're selling this picture. You see what I'm saying? We're selling this picture. Doing the pioneer plan. Now look, you remember the preacher said that the earth, the, the world was going to end in May something? What was that? What was it? May 21st. Well, it 
been happening, they've been doing this shit since the 1800s. You know, they got, see, because the Bible, see, they're thinking the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is a pamphlet from other books. Now, it's got science in it, but you got to have other books. So now, but he also said, look out for what day? October the 21st. Well, let's look on October the 21st. This is the Goddess Book of Days by Diane Stein, uh, which is a hell of a book. Um, the Goddess Book of Days by Diane Stein. Um, let's see what they say. Uh, October the 30th, the, the, the 21st. Um, so all this energy in the air, especially with this Halloween and all this stuff today, that's why we're telling people to get those what you call it. Now, you can do two things. You can laminate it. Or you can buy your frame and put those things in and put the glass. But it don't really need nothing. Just put it up on the wall. Because people are seeing shit come up out of it, just putting it on the wall and staring into it. We're getting reports from it. But that day, October the 21st, now based on what Christian, uh, he's right in line. Well, they don't want to hear this though. October the 21st is the feast of the Black Christ in Panama. It is the virgin and in the Virgin Islands. So they worship the Black Christ through the Virgin Islands. The Black Christ, he is a Watala, Apollo, Adonis, Osiris, Horus, Quasicoto, Baal, Dionysus, um, Dionysus, the Sun Father, Dionysus, Dambala, Shango, Tammuz, Demuzi, and it is the day, um, it's, 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 a, it's a Slavic moon goddess. But anyway, just about everything Christ figure around the world lines up on that particular day. Now there's one called Baal that comes out of um, Libya and some parts of, of Babylonia called Baal. He's also later on, he's called Belial. So the, the, so the who that comes in later takes the god that preceded it and they name it the devil. So that's, that's the custom. So, you, so, any, so if you want a new religion to rise, a new level of spirituality, and it's saying the same shit, the people say, well, it's saying the same thing, well, I've got to get rid of this one. So what you do is you level the deity that preceded it. To bring in a new one, so you can always call the other one the devil. So Belial becomes the devil, but it's Baal, and, uh, which is all under the uh, uh, forms of Osiris and Set. Set with the Osiris before Osiris in the pre-dynastic world. And he be, he's named the devil in the dynastic world. So that's a, a thing they do. The devil don't exist. The devil is some god. One man's devil is another man's god. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so Belial, Belial is bad on that day. So what they did to celebrate Baal, you got to get a movie called Dylan Dog. Dylan Dog. Dylan, like Matt Dylan. Dylan Dog. It's a movie set in New Orleans. They got the guy that played the last Superman in the movies. He's in the movie. He's Dylan Dog. And they uncover this plot. And what they want to do is this, this order want to bring back Belial. So in order to bring back Belial, they go get Tay Diggs. Now Tay Diggs is a black actor. You know, after Wesley Snipe was here, he the blackest in, in Hollywood. <laughs> Tay Diggs. So they go get Tay Diggs and they do this ritual to bring back Belial, which is Osiris, Seth, Dionysus, all the ones I just called, all, all that. This is the, the black God or the black Christ. That they're calling the devil in later form, Belial. So when they bring back Belial, Belial comes back when they put the ritual on Tay Diggs. Because Tay Diggs is playing a vampire, that's Osiris. You see, melanin comes out at night, serotonin in the daytime, melatonin at night. Right. The nighttime hormone is, hormone is called the Dracula particle. Melanin. So when they go get Tay Diggs to play Belial, they play Belial, they, they, they do a ritual to bring him back. When Belial get on Tay Diggs, 
And Tay Diggs is the blackest nigga in Hollywood now since Lester Slightman, since Wesley Snipes was locked up. When, when he turns into Betty L, he turns eight shades blacker than Tay Diggs. He is almost cobalt black. <laughs> Blue black. You see what I'm saying? And that was okay, they, so they, 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 you know, they always stopped the ritual in the movie, but they brought him back. That movie was about to raise up the black god. Hmm. So when Jeb Bush said, you motherfuckers need to quit this shit. <laughs> Talking shit about this man, and the preacher done said it's between May 21st and October 21st. You see? Okay, so what's coming back? All right, let's go into the science. Let's go into the science. First of all, the dimensions that are opening up, they are already here. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is around the trees. There's dimensions that's opening up around all the trees. The animals can go in and out. We got cats that go in the tree and disappear. And don't come back, but they'll send our other little kittens who appear beside the tree. And they'll be raised. Now we know it's the dimensions because one of the little kittens got in the house. And when we tried to get him out of the house, he ran up under our Urzuli altar and disappeared. Under the altar. Open the altar, and he disappeared. So these altars are dimensions so that the dimensions that we're talking about in this kingdom is around the trees. You need to get a book called, what's the name of that book? The Tree of Enchantment. The Tree of Enchantment by Orion Foxwood. It's a whole book on the spirituality and the spirit of the trees. It's called The Tree of Enchantment by Orion Foxwood. And it breaks it down again, the rituals and the magic, and it tells you all that stuff where you can. Hmm? Okay, all right. The tree of enchantment. Okay, you want to get that because that's what the um, that's what the uh, the thing is about the um, um, the Africans say they used to give trees water, milk, food. And the white man come and say, why are you giving that dog on tree food? That tree, you can't eat no food. He said, the tree has a spirit. It has an astral body. I'm giving the tree spirit the food. The tree partakes in the spirit just like you do when you offer stuff to the gods. The trees are some of the old gods. Some of the old gods are mystical creatures. There's a book called Magical Mystical Creatures by D.J. Conway. And they got all the gargoyles in there and stuff like that. It's called Magic and Mystical Creatures by D.J. Conway. But there's another book called, oh, by Orion Foxwood, it's called The Trees of, Enchan uh, uh, of, of Enchantment. So these trees, you see what I'm saying, and these old trees, you see, they, there's dimensions opening up, and now it starts to rain now. A lot of times when they have a lot of rain, these trees fall. You see, they cut down three on my, in, 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 uh, in front of my house last week, three big ass, they cut down mine in 2003 and stuff like that. So these trees, you see what I'm saying, but that's where the animals can go in and out, so they're showing what it is to mention. None of this, all this stuff is not what, it's, what, 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 what it appears to be. That's why that, uh, that shit in what, Mississippi, what's the name of that, um, that, that, earth, that tornado came to? Joplin. Joplin and wiped the whole city off the map. These are dimensions that's opening up. Y'all all right? Okay, all right. Let me, let me get a few things going. Okay, now. Okay. Um. Let me deal with this. Uh, um, Dr. Deborah Blair talked about how, you know, we never went, we know we never went to the moon. They faked that. They even showed it to you on um, Diamonds Are Forever. Right. How they faked the lunar landing. Then they, then they showed it on the moon. What's that movie with O.J. Simpson? Capricorn One. Capricorn One. They just put it on Mars. So Deborah Blair tells, the Dr. Deborah Blair tells the story on how the Russians tried to go in space. And when they got up there, some kind of entity or something blew them out of the sky. They had one woman left hanging on, and when she radioed back to a cosmonaut, when she radioed back to Russia, 
She said, they killed them all. And she said, they're coming for me now. I got to go in the ship with them. And they got out of the space industry. Okay, America faked that shit. All of them followed them. So what America did, to tell the truth, because they always got the truth always got to come out. So this year, it came out of a movie called Apollo 18. It's on movie and it's clear. Because <laughs> if it's already out of the movie, it's going to be a while before it comes to pay-per-view. So Apollo 18. And it tells the story on how America went to the moon. They always put it on the moon to throw you off. They never went to the moon. So America got up there, but when they got up there, the Russians was already there, and the Russians was dead. And, and they keep on going on until they, they, they all get killed. But it was the moon rocks that killed them. Anybody know about the moon, moon rocks? Melanin is associated with the moon. In the Hindu mythology, they got a god called, um, uh, 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 what's the name of it? Sama. Sama is, Sama is not, it's a plant, but Sama is also, you must have Sama in your veins to be a king. The Sama was also a person who was the father of the lunar race. Yeah, that's all about melanin. The moon, moon and melanin and all that stuff go together. So when the rocks killed the people on the ship, they were trying to say that the entities that killed the Russians in space was these black entities. You see what I'm saying? But they got them up there and the guy said, well, you knew that these, these you, when they, they called back to NASA, he said, you knew that they killed these Russians up here. And you sent us on a suicide mission. He said, so we're going to come on home. And the NASA people said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't come back here. We're not bringing you home. We're going to build you up as a hero to your children in, in America. But you ain't coming your ass back here. <laughs> and he died. They died all up there. But what they was doing, they was telling the story that Devil Blaine had talked about for years about the Russians. They just put it in another thing that America's in the moon. But when the Russians went up into space, they got wiped out. And America knew them, they couldn't go to no damn moon. They could do that little space station. That ain't nothing. But they couldn't go to no moon. That's, that's our stuff. You see what I'm saying? So Now they got this stuff, because remember now they talk about a few things. Um, a few things, I got to go into the story, then we can deal with some stuff. They talk about, they talk about, um, um, they had all this melatonin in the 90s. Melatonin, melatonin, had all these pills, and then around the mid-90s, it started disappearing. You only see a few bottles now. That's because the one that they was doing in the 90s, the first one was made out of crushed pine needle glands. But Dr. Richard King said, if white people take that melatonin, real melanin, or that real melatonin, he said they'll go crazy in 48 hours. So as a result, they had to take that off the market and come out with a synthetic thing. That's they, basically they just took a a combination of, of things, vitamins, and different herbs, and put it together, and that's what they call a melatonin. So that's perfectly safe. Because the one from the 90s, I took some, and whoever they kill, I woke up part of them. Because I experienced this person's death. It's in the same movie, Strange Days, where you experienced the person who died. Well, I took some, whoever that nigga was they hit in the back of the head, I woke up part of them. And several other people who was taking that shit from the 90s, they, they, they experienced the person who they killed that person for the same thing. So they took that off the market. So this thing here is an herbal thing. But this company put out a Bob Marley relaxation. It's called All Natural Relaxation. Bob Marley Mellow Mood. And it's got the new melatonin in it, which is basically safe. It's not the 90s. And I, I think it's a black company, I think. The Bob Marley's Mellow Moon, you can get it. I found it at Whole Foods. Um, but you know, you can find it, I don't know if you can find it stuff, but, it, but they're talking about getting rid of stress. It gets rid of stress. You want to drink a little shit of that shit. I know a lot of y'all do that stress. <laughs> See, I sleep all day till 3 o'clock. But I know y'all shoot, you know. You know, so, but yeah, so that's, that's something. Uh, 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 that's something else. Okay, now. All right. Let me go through this stuff right quick so I can go to what I'm going to deal with. Okay, and that's this. We used to sit in a house in 1990 and wonder how to get black people out of this, out of our condition. And so we started in 1988 up to 1990. And we put everything in the pot on how to get black people out of this condition. And our conclusion was you can't. Well, my mama told me that shit. <laughs> you see, you can't get these niggas out of this, this condition. 
And then, then we came to the conclusion that the masses ain't never did nothing but die. Now, let me explain why you are here and you are one out of 40 that woke up. So every one of you all is woke that has awakened. There's about 40 niggas that are dead. So the, the, the conscious thing is 0.1%, but that's all we need for all of them to transform. So you are going through the transform. It's like the head and the body of the snake. Now let me explain, because you say, well, why is that? Why can't everybody have a national consciousness? So let me try to explain this to you right quick before I go into this one last piece. It's very important. I'd rather get this thing. It's one last piece to get this on the film. The reason why the consciousness can't wake up is this. R.A. Squalor de Lubitz, who studied at the Luxor Temple for 15 years and studied the Camite stuff for years, um, he found out some stuff that the Egyptian priests knew in those 15 years of study. And it's also in the Hermetic text, and a guy wrote a book called Stellar Man by John Baines that talks about this. But uh, R.H. Waller, the Lubitz's wife, Isha the Lubitz, wrote a book that will explain it completely. Um, see, can I find it right quick? Y'all all right? Yeah. The book is called Open Another Way by Isha Swallow the Lubitz. I'll get the book in a few minutes. To open another way. By Isha Swallow the Lubitz. Now this is what the, the Egyptians said about the people on this earth. There's people, I'm gonna just paraphrase it for you. There's people that's born on the earth, a spiritual people, and there's the intellectual people. The spiritual people are higher than the intellectual people. Because the spiritual people can do both intellect and spirit. So there's the spiritual people, there's the intellectual people. You see. And then there is the people, which is the majority of people, that's not even born with a mind. What you don't understand here is that most people, when you're born down here, you're born into what is called an automaton state. <coughs> You don't have a mind. A mind has to be developed. First thing, it can be developed intellectually and then spiritually. But if you develop it spiritually, the intellect automatically comes because spirit is the highest one. Now, we're not talking about religion. Religion is false. It, that distracts you from the spirit world because you judge it. And you'll judge all the shit that's spiritual. You'll judge it based on a religious doctrine. That's what we have. So don't mistake spirituality with religion. You see what I'm saying? No religion. Islam, Judaism, none of Christianity, none of that shit. You see? Now there's hidden mysteries in the religion that's spiritual that the religion came to be religion from a spiritual system that once it breaks down, over years, in order to explain it to the layman, they make it into a religion that's most just marvelous. Has nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. You see what I'm saying? You know. Now, try to understand this. But the third class is what most humans are. And that's mindless automatons. That means they're on automation. <laughs> so remember in the matrix they say that the person is plugged in, you gotta look, look at them as an enemy. Okay, so. The reason why you, our people can't get out of this, because part of our people, based on the way the earth cycle goes, is they're on the automated level or the automaton level. Now, that automaton level, there's one that's higher than the automaton level, and that's the animal level. But the animal goes by its own instincts, and by its own, by its own instinct, it functions on the level it's supposed to function on. Certain things they don't do. I see these cats. Have the babies, and about three months into having, three, four months into having the baby, that mama cat get the hell on. You see? You know, so that they can live, especially once they've been raised in the wild, so they can live, you know, they won't be able to live if she's around. So there's certain things they function and stuff, they didn't have to be educated to do it. 
So that's an animal thing and stuff. They always coincide with nature and coincide with their, their uh, instinctual nature and stuff like that. Now, with the automaton, what which messes up is his goal is to become a spiritual person so he can do the duty of what he was supposed to come here to do, is to become back to the spirit. Or, in so many words, God. But because it's an automaton, it's two things. So what the ancient Egyptians used to do for the people that were the automatons or the mindless people. So everybody, that's why you see black people out here, you go, what was this motherfucker thinking? <laughs> what you don't realize, he never developed a mind. So 85% of our people didn't develop a mind. So you say, well, how do they function? So the Egyptians used to say, okay, look, this is how this thing goes. The ones that don't have a mind, they are automatons. We will build a culture around him, and if they can function in the culture, that will be the mechanism into what they, to, to which they function on. It's a cultural thing. So they'll do certain things based on the culture. You see what I'm saying? That was instilled into them, or acclimated into them since they was a child. You get where I'm coming from? So culture takes care of those automaton deities. You see? Meanwhile, the spiritual and the intellectual drives the culture. The spiritual gets transmissions from the cosmos. The intellectual breaks the trans spiritual transmissions down so that you can function with different mechanisms in the society. And the automaton people benefit from a culture that's set for them. You understand where I'm coming from here? So now, when we got out of slavery, we was mostly automatons. We built a subculture of common sense and certain things we had to do because we couldn't do every damn thing. It was against the law. And we functioned in that culture so well until that subculture started teaching the superculture. I don't want to say superculture. The main culture started teaching them ideals on survival. Ideals on moralism, ideals on certain things. Ideals on how to look at stuff spiritually, like music, like different things we used to do. We even took a religion and turned it into a ritualistic system that could be good for us that lasted for about a good couple of hundred years, maybe about a hundred or so years before this shit just becomes repetitious. And it served its purpose and the food ain't good no more. But we we but we we fixed it as a as a spiritual thing because we put African spiritual elements in it to make it function for us when the time when we had that subculture. So that's why they said they had to come and break us up with integration and all of this kind of thing. So they had to disperse the culture. So now you got people out here they running around the automatons without a culture. You see what I'm saying? Without a culture. So you can come and put drugs in the community because they don't have a culture anymore. You go to put drugs in the Chinese community, guess what they have to say? They will have an elder in there tell all the Chinese people, don't take drugs. Mm -hmm. It'll be just as simple as that. Yes. You see how fucked up we are? Yes. They can come and go. They don't have to have no programs and pitch money to get to you. They can just come and say, don't take no drugs. The Jews don't take no drugs. And guess what? They won't take them because they have a culture that's already embedded for them to function in the culture, even though some of them motherfuckers are automatons. But because, so when they took our subculture away, they took our culture away. And as a result, and all, and all the intellectuals, they don't even live in the community no more. You see what I'm saying? And the spiritual people, the people without the culture call you crazy. If it ain't, if it ain't Christianity. You see what I'm saying? You see? You see, so, that's what it's, so my point here is that you can't get these black people out of this because you don't realize they don't have a mind. As a matter of fact, when the spirit world looks down on the earth, they can only see balls of light. And those are the people that's awake. The other ones, they don't even exist. They're like a transitory, they're like a fucking spook. <laughs> they don't even exist. So they never lived. Series of events that never happened. That's all it's, it's just always an illusion. And the only thing functioning in this illusion is the light. Jesus is the light. The light is the light of the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is what gives you your knowledge and your transmissions. See what I'm saying? 
So your ass, well, am I doing this? My pioneer little man, no, you awake. If you in here tonight listening to this shit on a Saturday night, <laughs> your ass, your pioneer little man is over. <laughs> you see, so I always wonder, that always bothered me, why can't we train the masses? And then I realized what they found out in the ancient Egyptians. The masses don't even exist. They are automatons. They are something to function on the earth to get you through the earth while you become spiritual. You got all these spectators. You see what I'm saying? Why do you think that the white man can kill us up all these years and he don't even get punished by, by the spirit world? Because he never killed nothing. He made shit alive like he did Troy Davis. He woke Troy Davis' ass up and busted his ass out of prison by killing his ass and taking him out of the bullshit body. This nigga wanted to go back in a jail cell and be locked up for another 20 years because he didn't know. And like they say in Egypt, every day you live, you're supposed to know something. Because the day that you didn't know something, or you didn't learn something, was the day that you didn't live. Because it's only consciousness and energy. So a person without a mind is not even living. And that's why you can kill them up, and people can die by the thousands, and the earth don't even shit. That damn earthquake came through Joplin, Texas. You see what I'm saying? I slept good that morning. <laughs> Why? Because it didn't kill nothing but that which was a transitory automaton. And most white people are automaton. They worse because they got a culture to tell them they're the greatest country on the earth of America, this is America, and all that bullshit. You see what I'm saying? All that bullshit. Now it's convenient. I can go to Walmart. You know what I'm saying? I can get a VCR before a nigga in Russia or whatever, or a DVD player. That ain't shit. You see? Pawn shop be filled up with that shit the next month. <laughs> be filled up with that shit the next damn month. They got, they got damn on good wheels. You can go get a DVD player for twenty five dollars. Right. You see what I'm saying? And it cost two. It cost almost four hundred dollars when it first came out. That's just a distraction. And what distracts the people, what distracts the spiritual people, what distracts them is that they blind to this thing. They, they, they make false education for automatons. That's why they give you a degree. Right. I know when I first went to college and I looked at that syllabus, I said, ain't nothing in this damn book that I want to do. <laughs> and luckily I was an artist at the time. I said, well, I can do that. You see, but nothing. You see what I'm saying? You know, that I want to do. Don't put some fucking classes up in there. Then I'll pay. <laughs> well, I'll pay my tuition, hell. Yeah. I'll work like a dog. So, they wanted to know 
how he brought back eight thirty percent? Well, did, did, did the demons bring you back? He could. He didn't know. So by the end, by, by the middle of the show, they said the only thing that could bring you out of hell is an angel of the Lord. It's an angel of the Lord. And we're gonna bring this shit right home today on some shit that's happening. So the angel came through, and his name was Castiel. Now Castiel is also Cassiel. There's a real angel in the angel books. Get on. Um, see, get a little, a little good quick. You want to get on. Um, uh, you want to get the dictionary of uh, angels. You want to get this one. Yeah. The Encyclopedia of Angels by Richard Webster. Good. By Richard Webster Encyclopedia. Castiel, they call him Castiel. Now, he wears a trench coat. In, he wears a trench coat in, in, on the show. Now he's been there for the last three years. And every time they get in trouble, they do some stuff, they call him cast and he'll come with the trench coat on, but he wears his trench coat open. And he's an angel of the Lord. Okay. This year, Cassiel took over the heavens and told him, I'm God, you gotta bow down to me. They twist the stuff up a little bit, this stuff, you know. But he's a real angel. So the angel started coming to us in 2009. Now what are the angels? Let me explain this to you. Because a lot of people got a lot of problems with this because we learn about the angels in Christianity. But we all chematized now and all that. Let me tell you what happened. Let's try to understand this. You got all those natural rules and they are thousands of years old. Just like you got the Obishas, the thousands of year old, year old, the Voodoo, the Congo, the Hindu shit, thousands of years ago, that was the Kushite people in this Kush. The original Aryans were black people. They only became, the Aryans only became um, Aryans in the 1930s when the, when, when, when the white people just took them a race and said, hey, you know, they were reading Blavosky. Blavosky said these Aryan people are not black people. But when they traveled up to see the people, the people was dark skinned in Tibet. It was darker than that 2,000 years ago. They just made this here. We just started calling themselves aliens based on a, 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 a party. Took, they took the Aryan shit and said, We the Aryan. You know, motherfucker, you caveman. <laughs> Fuck, come on, we you know where you're from. You damn Aryans. Aryans were God people. So anyway, they had a language Sanskrit. That's black people shit. You go to India and so you go down to Southern India, you see blue black people that they suppress to this day. In the caste system, you, you, if, you, if you're black, get back, and if you're light, you right. If you're brown, you can stick around. That shit is in India. But all the Hindu God, all that shit is our shit. They inherited that from the black people. So anyway, these gods are very old. So what happened was this. Karnak Temple, the Coptics, but it started with the Hebrews, or what they call pre-dynastic Egyptians, that the white people are telling you Hyksos, and telling you they're white people. No, these were the pre-dynastic Egyptians that moved out. The, the pre-dynastic Egyptians was overthrown by the dynastic Egyptians, and then when the old kingdom fell, the pre-dynastic Egyptians, the shepherd kings, took the shit back over. These are the class of Egyptians, those became your, your Hebrews. You see what I'm saying? They say, I'm a shepherd, but I got, 2,000 slaves. Well, wait a minute. How can a shepherd have 2,000 slaves and you would be your, your camel dweller? The shepherd kings were kings in Upper Egypt. So they faked this shit with the, the Hyksos thing, and they went on into Palestine once Amos and them came and they had another battle and reestablished the dynastic king. Those are the number of the family fight between the Egyptians and the pre Jeremiah told you that in the book of the beginnings, volume one. You see, or volume two, you see. And so, uh, and so, um, those are the, those are the dynastic people. So what they did was at Karnak Temple and in Samaria, they knew that these gods. What happened with these gods? If they stay, if they stick around, this is very important. So if you gotta hang on just a minute, let me explain this shit to you because this is the link. This might be the shit to get you some visitation. And if you got some fucking problems, they can do some shit for you. But you gotta get the link. You got to hook up with them, so this is very important. Sometimes we got to just bear with some shit. Because we can't be looking at everything as entertainment. Mm -hmm. 
Some shit is serious. You see, I get on a goddamn airplane and plane and fly here. You need to make this work my time. Or work your time. Okay? So just listen. So when these gods get very old, the Egyptians knew, the Camites knew, that it was going to come a time for almost close to 2,000 years nobody would even speak the Egyptian language. They wouldn't even know what the gods were. They hear a little bit about it from, um, what's the guys, the Greek historian, not Herodotus, but the other guy that told them a little bit about the Egyptian gods. Can't think of his name right now. Uh, not, not, no, not Plato. It's a classical writer that talk, told him a little bit about it coming in. Huh? No, no, wait, 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 now he told, he told the history. It's another one that'll come to me in a man who can explain what the Egyptian gods were. That's the only thing they had. Because they didn't have, they didn't know Meta Meta or what have you. So what happened was for 2,000 years it wasn't going to be around. So that means that the language and the actual rituals are the actual, the, the ceremonies uh, to the Egyptian gods wasn't around. That means those Egyptian gods would die out. That's why right now, you might get more feeling from the Europe stuff than you can get with the Egyptian stuff sometimes. You go crazy off of the pictures. Now let me explain this to you. So what they did in the Karnak Temple and the Hyksos did, the Egyptian temples, what they had to do, the Egyptian gods, they had to redo them and give them new names. So the Egyptian gods became your archangels and your guardian angels. See? So, you got Horus becomes Raphael, some part of Horus becomes Michael. You see, so Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, all of these particular, Gabriel is a form of Tahuti. You see, so all of these Egyptian gods, when they gave them new names, they renewed them. Then the, then the Catholic priest and the priest kept the service going on to renew them into the new age. Okay? So when you so when you deal with the angels, you see me coming back to this angel shit to get that to turn to a Christian. When you deal with the angels, you're dealing with the energy of the Egyptian gods. It is the new energy. Let me explain. Now check this out. You know, if you notice, you deal with Europe, you deal with all the West African religion. In order to get something, you got to go in the ritual. They just don't come and appear, and you can ask them for some shit, and you don't do a ritual. The angels, all you got to do is ask. Now let me explain what this is about. Why did I can't go to a watcher and just ask? Why well, I got to do a ritual of him? Because what happened is this, and I try to understand this. These rituals have been going on for thousands of years. And the older they get, the more rituals they got to do for you to drum up that energy. You understand? To get them to do what you need them to do. Now what happened with the Egyptian gods, the priests at Karnak and the Hyksos people turned them into angels, and because they had new names and a new frequency, two things happened. The priests kept them going simultaneously with the but they, they transformed into a new energy. So they, the angels are more powerful because they are the Egyptian gods renewed. Then they took the names of El, the Elohim, and stuff from Samaria and started naming them uh, different ones when the Hyksos came in that particular area. But it's another one, another black language. But because they made a new characteristic out of the Egyptian God, they renewed them. Now the other thing was, when Christianity came around, in order to front this monotheism shit, they came in at the conferences, Conference of Trent, Conference of Nicaea, and all these conferences, and they outlawed the angels. That's why you don't find them like two in the Bible, which was good. Why? Because the more you call it, let's say if you got a world religion, and it's thousands. Like they got 50 million people in Europe and Voodoo worldwide, and 3 million of white people in the United States. Set over a whole Europe of shit. So, Try to understand this. If the angels would have gone into Christianity and you had millions and millions of people calling on them, you pull their energy. These things were never meant for mass religions. The religions of the spiritual system was never mass in the ancient world. They only became mass when they became religion and everybody could worship the same shit. Put on your clothes and go to church. <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from here? 
Okay, so by them knocking them up out of the Bible, they preserved them. And the priest kept dealing with them, but they preserved the energy where they didn't, they wasn't being pulled on by the masses. Because if the, if the, if, if those if those things, if the Congress didn't knock them out of the Bible, outlaw those angels, then the people would be constantly doing, and the more the people call on those angels, the weaker they get. So now, the angels, nobody deal with them. But they are the Egyptian gods. And because they have been renewed, and because they haven't been tampered with, it's being pulled on. What happened was this. Now you can call on them. And you calling on those angels is the same as calling on the Egyptian God. And they work based on you calling on them. That stimulus check, those guardian angels, those are melanin spirits. And you just, just write that name down on that check and the stuff works. Now let me give you the last piece. This is it. We can go, but we got to deal, deal with this. Where this thing comes home. Where this thing comes home. Castiel wears a trench coat on what you call on supernatural. My brother, and Castiel is an angel of Capricorn. My brother, who's never seen supernatural, period, called me up this spring. He said, I ended up someplace and I saw a mom. And he said, when she looked at me, she was like, wait a minute. What are you doing? He looked, he said, no, what you doing here? Wherever he was, he wasn't supposed to be. Now, maybe it was his astral body. But he wasn't supposed to be. And when he looked at her, he was like, what the hell are you doing here? And my mama made the transition in 06. Burned up in the fire. But she said, she came back a year and said, I had to sacrifice for the people. So check this stuff out. And he said, we talked for a minute, and then I got to have on. He said, we, we had a little conversation. I don't really remember the conversation. He said, but um, she had on a trench coat like Colombo. Mm -hmm. I said, you never saw Supernatural, did you? He said, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I said, she, she had on a trench coat, so she wants, she, wants to, she wants to give me a message. I said, there's an angel in the Supernatural with a trench coat. And his sign is Capricorn, when you read up on it. He rules the, the, the area of Capricorn. And his day is Saturday. And I said, Mama was a Capricorn. I didn't think no more about it. And I said, that's supernatural. I said, so I said, okay. Then about a month later, I said, oh shit, she's trying to tell me something. What it is, because I got me a message about two years ago from a sister in Florida. She said, yeah, um, this is, okay, this is my mother. This is, listen to this, bring it home. This is my mother. She, she made the spirit, you know, give you another one of her. This is her, her she was a school teacher. That's her at her desk. <laughs> school teacher, come up, peace night and shit. So she made the transition. Wasn't nothing really wrong when she just burn up. When the hit, she made the transition. It's called spontaneous human combustion. So, so what happened was, I said, okay, but I had gotten this particular message two years before. So she called me from Florida. She said, this brother want to give you a message. She said, he is now a warrior angel or like no other. Mm -hmm. So Khalid Muhammad transformed, and so whatever that station he was down here with that militant shit, when he got up there, he took the position of a spiritual warrior angel. She said he's a warrior, he got in touch with he's a warrior. I'm telling these people fill these positions. You see? They, they do work, they turn into something else. You see? So she's a walking, so when he, so I heard this about two years ago, I said, yeah, okay, I, I, I said, that makes sense. So my mother, when she came, when she came down through stuff, and she said, okay, when she showed up with the trench coat, I said, oh, I get it now. You done took over Castiel's position. You are from Castiel now. So we talking about a link. She said, now you get it. So I said, okay. 
I said, so. What you want us to do? I said, you want the people to call what you do? Well, no, they want to call it on me. Because <laughs> what happened was she had a friend about two months ago. Made a transition. I went in the thing and she made a transition. My brother called me and said she just died about an hour ago. I went in the living room with the altars. I told him, I told him, I said, look, Anubis come and take her, take her through the doorway. And I said, tell her that this is Bobby, son of Glacier. And as soon as I did it, no more than 15 minutes, my mama came through and knocked the tree across the yard, across the street over. A big ass tree. She came in and knocked that tree over and it fell into the house. Hit the people car. <laughs> The car was broke anyway, so they ended up getting a new car, so she hooked that up. And knocked out the lights on that side of the street. After I told her to take her friend, they were very happy. So when she told me, no, 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 don't do that, because she was saying, no, I'm one of these angels of destruction. You see what I'm saying? Now, the point on what I'm trying to say here is, on what I'm trying to say here is, is what she was trying to say. And guess what? And this is the funny part about it. She's now the ruler as Castiel, he rules the seven heavens. So now she's a part of a ruler of a sector of heaven. So now, because of the humans that used to live on the earth that's now taking their positions in the heavens, and we talk about all this stuff that's around us. You understand what I'm saying? We are there now when you can have ancestors can come back and give you their positions. They, they started coming back in 2003 and I had a psychic girl uh, 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 her name was uh, uh, Simone. Uh, she's the, uh, uh, she lives out of California. And we were talking one day, and John Henry Clark said, you know, he said, I hang, John Henry Clark came through, he said, I hang out with um, Amos Wilson, John G. Jackson, uh, Diop, Du Bois. He said, all the scholars got around me hang out. I said, Malcolm, who you with? He said, Malcolm, he said, I hang with Elijah Muhammad. And this is when I knew that the shit was real. Talked to Tupac, he said, yeah, well, they, they, you know, they, they can make you live when you, once you make it to the hospital, they got the technology to make you live. They can cauterize wounds. You don't die from gunshots once you get in the hospital. They can make you live. They can take your head off and hook it up to some electrodes and your ass can live. They, the medicine is that good. There's a movie called Critical Care with James Spader. And they tell you, you know, we got the technology to make anybody live. So when he dies in the hospital four days or five days later, they killed him. He said, they killed me. So Biggie came through, and he was talking and stuff, and he said, well, he said, um, he said, well, I do know this thing. He said, what's the name didn't have nothing to do with my death? To my pop. He said, Puff Daddy. He said, well, Puff Daddy and Sean Puppy Combs at the time. P. Daddy knows who did it. He said, he didn't have nothing to do with it, but he knows who did it. And then he said, and I was getting ready to go, and he said, I want to say something else, I want to say something else. And I'm like, what? What, you can say something? He said, I, I should have said more with my rap. What he was saying was, since he made it to this realm, he said, I should have said more conscious stuff with my rap at the time, but I didn't know. And that's what he regretted. You see, that, that's, that's what he regretted and stuff. So that's what I'm trying to say here. These people have these stations. You see, so when my mother came and got, she got her own fucking sector of heaven. Let me give you one more example of her. My brother got a hot water heater company where he installs hot water heater. He used to sell insurance and shit like that and all this type of stuff. He got a hot water heater company. He, and he installs hot water heaters. He fell into this shit by mistake. So what happened, every now and then he gets some guys, crackheads, they'll go and try to get him, get him some hot water heaters. You know, they can steal this shit out of the house. My brother got a brand new Volvo, and that night he was in some neighborhood. He got out of the car for two minutes to walk on the side of his house, and the car got stolen. He just got it early that day. My mama came through and said, I had them to steal the car, because this nigga was getting ready to get caught, but them niggas stole the hot water, he was going to take his ass to jail. So in order for this nigga to not get caught up with them crackheads, she said, I had the motherfuckers in the neighborhood steal the car. So that time that sector of heaven, she been protecting my she's the same one that took her, took the, took her finger and put in the gun when they put the gun up to my brother's head, my youngest brother, and shot and the book the book shot and the gun got jammed. Because they were trying to rob him. So she was, she said, I had him steal the car. And then she said, and all and all the other crackheads he knew, I, I had them all sent to jail. 
He said, man, I don't know about them crackheads no more. He said, man, is that you, your bitch? He said, man, all of them in jail. I said, mama did that. But see, so we, so we talk about ancestors that's ruling over the sector of heaven. And so your thing is, by you being conscious, now you got to find out what your thing is. But in order to find out this, you can't be distracted by the shit you call your life. And your little idiosyncrasies on why you didn't do this and why you didn't do that. And why you lost this child. Or why that nigga left you. You see what I'm saying? You know, and all this type of stuff. So, you want to get out of here? <laughs> question and answer? Okay, let's do some question and answers. And before and we get to the question and answers, it takes us about $2,000 to get people here. And we need a little help here. Yeah, okay. Get some okay, the sister asked, you want to know about that seal? Those seals are seals for riches. They come from the moors. So you take those seals and you put them in your wallet. Okay, you sign, you got a, 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 that check. You got a, it says a, a, on that check it has a thing for your guardian angel. It's a line that says your guardian angel. You look on that piece of paper with your birthday and find out what your guardian angel is on that long piece of paper and sign it on that check. And then put that check in a frame. And it'll work for you. It's already got here. It'll work for you. Give me some questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't. I know immortals. It's got to be something. When you talk about immortals, it's got to be somebody mortality rising. But I do know there's a book out. This, this movie coming out on 11, 11, 11. There's a book out called 11, 11 by Solara, S-O-L-A-R-A. -A. It's called 11, 11. By Solera. The book was written in 1992, but the stuff in the book started happening in January. So you can read this book, it was written 20 years ago. It came online in January. It's called 1111 by Solera. You see? Get that book. Uh-huh. What's that? You, uh, you spoke about the seven heavens that she rules. Uh-huh. Isn't that, isn't that uh, seven heavens in the book that you know? The book of Enoch? Mm -hmm. It's the same one. You know, um, Muhammad was taken to the seven heavens, and Elijah was taken to the seven heavens. You gotta realize now this ruling is not like um, she's on the throne with the kingship. We're talking about energies. So she's a part of a ruling powers. It's set in that sector. And that sector, the seven heavens, is dealing with Saturn, and Saturn is a very powerful planet. Uh, it's a very powerful zodiac. There's a book called Saturn, The New Look at the Old Devil. It's called Saturn, The New Look at the Old Devil. Saturn is very powerful. Baron Sondi is a Saturn deity. He rules the underworld. Yeah, he rules the underworld. Give me some questions. Mm -hmm. You said something about um, October 14th. Yeah, October, October 14th is the day that they worship the goddess Durga. Durga, and uh, Durga is a is a East Indian version of, of the goddess Sekhmet in India, and it's a real powerful force. Durga. Um, uh, she's a warrior deity, so you, you gotta translate that into cosmic energy, especially when it comes to your own body. She's a kundalini type of goddess on which, um, what's her name is? Um, Sethi. Um, that's the 14th, but that, that festival goes into the 16th, which is the biggest day in India, which is the goddess Lakshmi, which is the goddess of prosperity. She is a form of the, she's a part of the form of the Egyptian Aset, Isis, and she's also a form of the Egyptian Mayat, which is the winged Isis. But she has the multiple arms, which represents the wings. So she's a goddess of wisdom, a goddess of beauty. She'd be a form of Urzuli in, in Vudum, um, um, Aphrodite in Greek. Um, she's also a form of Kuan Yin also. But that goddess Lakshmi is a goddess of um, uh, a prosperity. So uh, when, you, when you first get you an altar and get you a, a, 
a locks me altar and put her on the altar and clean your house up real good and put out some sweets for her, prosperity will come and stuff like that. But like I said, we got several pictures of that in the picture packet. What's that mean? Uh huh. She was. She was um, about five seven. That's tall for a woman. You know that's not short. You see, I'm five eight and a half. She was about five seven. So that's. Well, well, naturally, it'd be bigger than the yeah, gas. You know, Metatron is biggest the universe. Um, you know, yeah, they can be, yeah, they, they can do that. And sometimes that's the indication of their power and their enormity of what they govern and, and what their energies is like. Somebody had a hand? You, yeah, go ahead. Um, how can one attract your soulmate? Your soulmate? Yes. <laughs> um, tell you what you do. You call this number. <laughs> call this number. Now, I'm not talking about me, but it was about five, about seven years ago. I would tell you to call that number. Before <laughs> my queen came, I was on the ship. I was an equal, an equal opportunity for. Me. Fat, old, <laughs> ugly if they got pretty feet. You can be ugly if you got pretty feet. That damn it is on. Tall, skinny. You see what I'm saying? I was equal opportunity. But I'm talking about now and now. Now I'm sure. Um, and see what happens with people in relationships. When I'm in a relationship with somebody, I, I never find a need to screw around. I, it just wasn't one of my things. And that's lucky. Because if I was one of them niggas that screwed around while I was in a relationship or marriage, I'd be best up. You ever seen which way is up when a woman says, you screw this guy? I don't know. That's how Linda is. <laughs> she will know. I went to Chicago. This woman invited me up to lecture. So she's going to go get naked and get up in the tub. And let the door open and say, ooh, this is tub. Water feels good. I'm like, and the next thing you know, Linda rang and said, what the fuck going on? <laughs> She didn't, she said, is a nigga, she said, the motherfucker in that naked. I said, yeah, she's trying to entice some nigga. <laughs> she wasn't really, she knew I wasn't going to do nothing, but she could catch the energy. You see, so, and that's a, so that's a whole other system. Now, when I was, when I had the multiple women I was doing between 2000 and 2004, when I get to do something, I got to take the phone off the hook. Why? Because it's a vampire lady. Every girl that I was going with, I had several girlfriends, and all of them I was going with, and you screwed them tantrically, which means you screwed them a couple of times and you don't come. So you get their energy, and they have a part of you. And I did that every time I start knocking boots with the other phone, that phone will ring. I said, damn, they be ringing, ringing. I knew you was doing something. <laughs> but now, with her, she is like with her, she was like, the girl that's not in the tub, I said, this goddamn woman invited me up so you know, get this lecture going so she, she, so she can get with me. I didn't do nothing. But when she got in the tub, Linda said, shit. She rang the phone and said, what the hell going on? Is somebody in that neck? And I said, yeah, she trying to do something. <laughs> she laughed. So I know, so what you think about put my Johnson in somebody? <laughs> you just be like her screwing the person. Because it's that length. So. That's a whole other lecture. But what I'm saying here is, there's a woman, her name is um, what's this woman's name? Uh, she did a, she did, she's a witch in Australia. And she did a, I uh, can't think of her name right now. Deborah. Deborah. Her name is Deborah. They're coming me in a minute. Uh, uh, once, something once upon a ritual, and it was this woman called Deborah, something I can't think her name. And she, she's, she's got a big following in Australia, and she got a ritual on there that you can do to find out what your soulmate is. So if you, if you call the house, you can get, you can, you can purchase that DVD, and 
And that's the best one to do magically. Because the reason why I say that is because one sister said that Valentine was her soulmate. She called me up and I said, wait a minute, you have multiple soulmates and multiple incarnations. He might have been your soulmate in another incarnation, incarnation not necessarily yours. And so she's like, no. Nah. And she wasn't in and she was getting all mad with him with the other women. And I'm like, look now, Valentine is a pretty boy and I already know he ain't going to go for you. <laughs> you ain't in his makeup. And so this thing all went down and, and it all went down and when it, when it came down, she, uh, she, got in, uh, the dog, she got in an argument with a girl that Valentine was messing with. And then Valentine said, put that motherfucker on the phone. I said, I ain't gonna never fuck with you, so I ain't gonna, ain't gonna soul me shit. And I told her, I said, that soul me might have been another incarnation. You see what I'm saying? Well, I'm not gonna have sex until I get Valentine. I said, well, you might well just put a chastity belt on your shit and fuck it up. But you ain't having it. So the best way to do it is to, uh, is to, uh, Get that woman's DVD. Get that woman's woman's DVD. And, and um, uh, she had her. Yeah. yeah. So as far as like, I call it like a sixth sense, like mm -hmm. premonitions and, and thinking things are gonna happen and things. Yeah. Those types of things. Yeah. What is that? That's the last bit of the psychic energy. See, we had multiple things. Well, we could talk to each other telepathy, did the telephone. The sixth sense is the leftover residue, so it is very. That's what we have now. But before the sixth sense, we had a complete detail of files when we were the gods. We could communicate, we could fly. All that shit you see the superheroes do, we used to do. You see. But as the, the years went on, and we got more encased in this physical thing and, and, and stuff, when we first got into physical, we could do all those things. But as the years went on, we lost more and more of those abilities, and it went down to a sixth sense. So when you talk about a sixth sense, you're really talking about a, re a residue. We talk about here, when we talk about paternity of God, we talk about the reacclimation of coming online with the full power. That's different. I always tell the story where you go and say, well, why does Egypt have all these buildings, but yet the Africa don't have nothing? That's because the Africans had detailed files, so everything that they were trying to convey in Egypt, they was limited in their, they, they was limited at detail files. They, they were the gods. So as we started losing our sense, we had to go and go to the, 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 the Nile Valley because it, it had less moisture. It was a desert, so that means stuff to be preserved on. So we had to go to the Nile Valley and start chiseling out the histories on those large monuments and those temples. The Africans were the people in those large monuments was talking about as of the Egyptians too. So we're talking about something that's even greater than just the sixth sense. That's just the, that's just the stuff that they talk about now because they say most people only use, what, 10% of their brain? Well, that's, that's because we learned from the Europeans system now. And he was only capable of using 10% of his brain. Now when we are born, because we only are activated in his system, we, are, we end up not having 10, only, we don't end up having 10% of our brain because it's something that we born in an inferior society that doesn't even have the knowledge to teach how to do that. And in Africa, you talk about thousands and thousands of years of deterioration, so a lot of that stuff is lost. So when we talk about this is beyond the sixth sense, we talk about becoming gods where you can walk through that wall. You see what I'm saying? Walk, walk, walk through that wall. You see, um, you know. And one guy called and said, my, 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 my dog went through the damn wall. So the dog can do it, we all too have them. We used to fly and all that. We got the Afri African narratives that say we used to fly. Mm -hmm. Devil Gray. Huh? Devil Gray. Devil Gray is her name. It's called Once Upon a Spell. Call down and get that. That's the one you want to do and do that. Because just that whole soulmate thing, you're going to need some real power these days. <laughs> it better be the black man. See, before it used to be, do you have a job? Then it was, do you have a car? Then it got so bad, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> the standards had to get low. Job, no problem, no job, no car, okay. Now it's, are you crazy? I just don't want you to kill my ass, but everything else is <laughs> We the unique motherfucker on the planet, not a black man. You see, what's that system? Um, what's
What did you say the name of the slow kill and seafood is called? It's called correction. Correction? Correction, yeah, correction. Look it up on, on BP, correction. They put it, it's in all the fish, all the fish is contaminated right now. And all of this contaminated, no seafood, no seaweed, no kelp, no sea salt, all that shit's contaminated. It is working on you now, especially with melanated people. It shuts down the melanin because the, the, the stuff is, that cleans up oil is cleaning up melanin, oil and carbon. So it really works on, on you, your central nervous system. Uh, what's that? Is there anything to the television? Because uh, sometimes I find myself watching television and I don't know what to do. Well, they've been having cameras in them since the 80s, since 1980. And when you cut them off, they're never cut off. It's called standby. But it, it, it's, it's, it's a standby. So it's always on and they can watch it, whatever. Usually what we do is you get up, get up, get one of those on. In the bedroom, we got a little power thing where you mash it and all that shuts down electricity-wise. But just like a cell phone don't need the damn battery, they got a little power back in there so even if you unplug it, it's got enough power. Because it, it charges all the time. So even when you unplug it, it's still on. So what you got to do is drape something but, Wool, black cloth over it. Especially if you've got one in your bedroom. You drape a cloth over it. And a, a cloth over it and neutralize it. And, and stuff like that. What's that? Um, so you're talking about the mind calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of that stuff, when we talk about the mind calendar, We've been in 2012 by 10 years. Mm. Um, see, stuff don't come on dates, they come on cycles. Everything comes in a cycle. We're in a 2012 cycle. So we can't really, so when they put the date up there, they understood that man would be on a linear movement based on the European and the Gregorian calendar. So they put that date, but they were trying to suggest more of a cycle than the actual day. If you were talking about 2012, the actual day, then something gonna happen. You're gonna be pretty disappointed because it's a series of cycles that's happening. So Joplin, Texas, or Joplin, Missouri, was a 2012 event. That earthquake was a 2012 event. Now that earthquake, Dr. Devil Blair, his prophecies, uh, had predicted that in the early 1990s, as a matter of fact, he spoke at the Nation of Islam, gave Farrakhan that same prophecy. So Farrakhan went down to Mississippi in 1992 and told him when he left Mississippi, the ship was going to be underwater. And after he left Mississippi, it was up on the water. And the people was going on crazy, but what it was is he had had their Leclerc's prophecies. The same prophecies that hit D.C. and hit this area, was getting that devil bread prophecy. And you know my mama predicted that shit in the 70s. Mm -hmm. My mama was a person, if you didn't have an answer to it, they said, go ask Miss Glace Siri. And she would tell you. And at first I said, when she a school teacher, she studied, she, that motherfucker was doing some transmissions. She could tell you anything you wanted to know about anything. They said, go ask Miss Glace Siri. And recently, we had a, a the preacher who buried my mama. She had a boy that graduated law school and had a client down in the town. He only had one client from Mullins. And he, and he forgot her damn name and know nothing about her. The preacher said, you better call Miss Glade Siri. And she called Miss Glade Siri, and he just said a few things about her, and she told that motherfucker where to go and where she lived, and all that. So she predicted that earthquake in the 70s. She said, y'all, she said, wait for that motherfucker hit on the East Coast. Cause they got a bet, this fault line, so she predicted that. So those are 2012 events. Yeah, uh-huh, what's that? You heard anything about the German film called Transfer, where it's a film about white folks who go
called Transfer. I'm, I'm, I'm going to check that out. Uh, I'm, I'm going to check that out. Um, yeah. Um, give, me a, give me some questions. The reason is uh, the, any reason. Christmas week, we, we put up Christmas. But they have year-round reefs. And what it is that reef pulls in positive energy inside your house. It's a porthole. So that's why you see white people with reefs on their door, especially rich white people. You go and ride out in these big ass homes and you'll see reefs on the door. And gargoyles. Those reefs pull in energy. We always have a reef on our door. Year-round. You see. Mm -hmm. What's that, sister? Um, well, we saw that shit happen in Haiti when they went down there and tried to steal stuff. Yes. Be honest with you, the information when you get it is 20 years old. You see, been there and done that. They've been doing, they do everything to us. You know, they, they, they do everything to us. That shit is 20 years old when we get it. You see what I'm saying? They would be doing more to organ transplants, but what happened was is, their, our, our organs, they, they, their bodies reject our organs because of the melody. Mm -hmm. So we would have more of that going on. Yeah. You see, uh, it would be a real factory here. They would use us for that, but their bodies reject the organs because of the melody in it. You see, because of the melody. Uh-huh. Bob, would you say something about uh, the pharmaceutical in industry and about uh, this high blood pressure? Medication and everything about our needs. Yeah, well, the pharmaceutical industry was started. You know, they ran all the spiritual people out in the turn of the century, and that that was started and all. But um, all the high blood pressure stuff and all. Our our blood pressure when the Kundalini rises, your blood pressure is going to be high anyway. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's going to be high anyway. We have a different pressure. You see what I'm saying? Because of the melanin and the Kundalini than white people, and they put us on the blood pressure medicine. And tell you, you got to be on that for the rest of your life. And the only thing you got to do to slow down your 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 your, your pressure, your blood pressure, is meditate. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, it's meditate, and your blood pressure. You can regulate your blood pressure through your thoughts. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But but because, but because we don't like I got a friend now. You know, he's a school teacher. You know, but he's dead, and he's on blood pressure medicine. I told him, look, man, don't mind your blood pressure medicine. I said, cause you in your forties. When you get in your forties, you done had years of eating meat, and your colon builds up. And as a result, your body has to pump more pr uh, pressure, blood pressure, to digest. Mm -hmm. Only thing you got to do is get a series of colonics, and then start cleaning out on a regular basis, and your stuff go down. So what happened with him? He taking high blood, high blood pressure medicine and stuff like that. And I say, no, nah, man, you've been eating meat. For the last 40 something years, and your colon is building up, and your, your blood pressure has to pump more blood to digest any food. So, if you get a series of colonics and then start doing a regimen of cleaning out with your diabetes and your, and your cellulites and, and stuff like that, your blood pressure will uh, uh, regulate. You see, so that really has a lot to do with our blood pressure. Is A lot of us, especially the conscious people, is based on the Kundalini energy. You see, based on the Kundalini energy. And I got this girl, she was a, 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 a complete vegan. She didn't hardly eat nothing. Picture of health and her goddamn blood pressure almost shot off the, broke the damn machine. Because of the Kundalini energy in there that was on a high level. Yeah, give me some questions. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Get them all day at the goodwill for two dollars. <laughs> yeah, the reach, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, what's that? No, I'm just gonna ask you, what's going on with the Lydia uh, situation? Uh well first of all, you gotta realize the um Libya was the home of Bess. And that's the Trois. And this represents the quantum world. So in one aspect of the Egypt, they call it Arab Sun Spring with Egypt doing stuff. And um, um, uh, 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 Libya.
Libyan stuff. That is, one of that is just the, the, the signs of time. Now as far as Gaddafi and all that kind of stuff, you see uh, Gaddafi and all that kind of stuff, um, he just stayed too fucking long. <laughs> see, he, 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 he's played right into the cracker's hands. They call him a dictator, so what you do, he should have set it up where he was out of there by 2005. He had all this money, had another person to think. No, he want to stay there forever. And that falls in the hand to give them what they're trying to do and they're trying to get your all and get all this stuff. The nigga stayed too fucking long. He was stupid on that point. Farrakhan told him in 2005, you need to get your fucking ass, they're coming after you. And what they did, they came after his stupid ass. That's just a dumb ass nigga that stayed too damn long. You see? He's a dumb ass nigga. You see? It stayed too fucking long, so you you fit the role of the dictator. Dictators want to rule forever. They have to be forced out. And that asshole stayed too long. Dumb motherfucker, all he had to do was put his people in place. When they tore down them buildings in New York, he should say, look, I'm out of this bitch. <laughs> you don't think they're going to fuck with me with this lock of these Scotland shit? And they blow up their own damn buildings to make a point? And go and start a war with a right for nothing? And he's sitting his little stink ass up there in the middle of fucking the end of when the Arab shit happened? Right. Fuck it. This is a stupid motherfucking nigga. Now that politics, that's all that. I don't pay that shit no attention. None of that shit. And all of them niggas, you know. You know, none of, none of that stuff. But, but on the other hand, that's just a lot of signs of the times. Because those are the African states. But for the you see what I'm saying? That used to be Carthage. That's where Hannibal came from. You see, that's what, uh, you know, that's where the Moors. Hannibal was called the Moors. That's where some of the Moors originated from. You see what I'm saying? So that's a whole other thing. You see, but you know, I don't get into the politics or, or something, you know, on that type of thing. You stupid nigga. When they blew up the buildings, he gave away all those nuclear weapons. He should have got the hell out of You see what I'm saying? Get the hell out of it. So, you know, don't give them time that y'all won't point the thing at you. You see? So, you know, you stupid. You don't know this cracker. You will learn. You will learn this motherfucker is. You will learn. I went to England and they had that hate law. The guy said, what about the white on the radio? I said, I don't know what the fuck you talking about. <laughs> because what happened? I say some shit on the radio. Next thing I know, I go to the fly all the way over there, spend some money, and get to the airport. They say, you can't come in. But we got hate laws. <laughs> Stupid shit. You know, you know, the human artificial. We done took it off of YouTube twice. I made that for black people in 93. Some niggas still keep putting it up. But it don't matter because it make me more popular. <laughs> but the spirit say, no, you got a big white following. You don't want no white following. Because once the white motherfuckers start following you, then the government will be concerned. But we put that human artificial to make sure that you can never cross that damn barrier. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? That's the one they follow in the white people. Right. Right. Watch that shit. You see? You know, they know they fucked up. Like Dawood said years ago. He said, they said, Dawood, when you gonna come kill us? <laughs> when you gonna come kill us? You know? So what I'm just trying to say here, you know, um, uh, you know, so I said, you know, I don't go where I ain't, I, I'm not meant to go. And that's what the white people say, you know. You know, uh, in 94, I got a thing that I, that I told my bro, no, the fucking white colleges hooked me up. UCLA, USC, all of them. That was a $10,000 circuit starting out. $10,000 every time I speak. And each year you speak, it gets higher. By this time, I've been up to $25 a speech. Spirit say, man, don't fuck with that shit. <laughs> don't go where you ain't, where you wasn't made to go. And then what happened? Guess what? Who called me? They, they let me know this is bullshit. They get ready to fuck with you. King's College called. Do you know what King's College is? That's the college that Khalid Muhammad got in trouble with. That Farrakhan had to denounce him for the white man. King's College called me to come. I said, no, nah, fuck that. I only did the black colleges. You see what I'm saying? I only did the black colleges. You see what I'm saying? But I'm um, not, so you don't go where you don't supposed to go. And all, uh, you know, and stuff like that. People like, I'm going to come on this TV show. I'm going to go on fucking TV. Let me tell you something about the, about the man. You ask him, this 
this man a government agent? Let me tell you something. Any black person you see on the TV is a government agent. Guess what? They don't let their true enemies on TV. So you don't even have to ask the question, who's a government agent? Is he on TV? Al Sharpton, no justice, no peace. Now he's an anchor on NBC. Yes. That is only motherfucking show. Six o'clock. He's an anchor on NBC News with the same goddamn Buffon. Reverend Buffon is a fucking anchor saying that no justice, no peace. Go man, Angel. Father Shakur in the Bahamas, tell her to come from Cuba to the Bahamas and have the authority that they're going to arrest her. Yeah. All the news. He just replaced Jesse because Jesse got too old. And his goddamn grill of the ginger was loosening up his gums so he couldn't speak like he used to. And he got that drag and shit. Gums got too old and them goddamn ginger's done fucked up. But he got a whole grill that got knocked out when he was playing football at A&T, knocking out A&T. Mm. And his grill got fucked. They said, no, he didn't need no slurpy motherfucker. You see You see? So that old shit went on with Jesse. So they replaced him with Reverend Buffon. You know what's that? Um, he's sitting there looking like goddamn, uh, that nigga on the Quaver old spot. <laughs> goddamn Quaver on the newscast. Sitting around the table with all these motherfuckers. And he got his own show. Now he performs now. I don't get no wrong now. That goddamn nigga on that fucking um, that Troy Davis, he put it to their ass. Now when it comes to the black issue now, they gotta keep some shit going. So I look at it for entertainment. But that goddamn nigga can't perform that shit. Talk shit about his Republicans and all that white shit. It's a, I mean it's comedy to me. That nigga, that nigga got that gift to perform. And his show this, is that what this shit is? So they got the right man for it. Well, Buffon get on that shit. <laughs> and any little injustice now, I did like he did when that motherfucker called them girls and all they had hoes. He stood up and he got that motherfucker fired. Because one thing you don't do, you don't let a motherfucker fuck with your dogs. That's right. Now, what's the name made that mistake, Martin Luther King? Mm -hmm. Talking about, you know, we going to wear them down in love and let them move your daughters up in that goddamn church. And they were stuck in that church for 46 years until I went to freedom. See, I went to freedom. And so they were stuck in there because once a bomb blast, it hit the knocks you out your ass so bad so fast you don't know you're dead. Yeah. They were stuck in there. They, people, all the people riding around Alabama used to see the people out the window. Mm. And when I went down there, they said, What's going on? Everybody, when I went to damn Birmingham, everybody said, Yeah, we see it. And after 43 years, ain't no need motherfuckers stop to do no magic. Mm. And I had to wait till I get down there and I found them four guards around King Tut's, four goddesses around King Tut's tomb. And I had to go down there with them pictures and free them motherfuckers. You see? So I like the music that when that motherfucker called him out of head holes, he got that motherfucker fired. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. How can we capitalize on Let me tell you something. Them solar flares is powerful. And they are here to enhance the melody. Now, if you get a book called um, Two Common Prophecies by Carter Rail is his last name. So, something Carter Rail. Two Common Prophecies. In there, he explains how whenever they want a civilization to fall, the, f the sun start, stops producing the energy, and therefore the melatonin levels drop, and the civilization fall. When they want a civilization to, to rise, the sun starts producing energy and solar flares and stuff in that area so the melatonin levels can rise. That's why they call it the people of the sun. So now the melatonin levels are rising based on these solar flares, and these solar flares are hitting the earth. And let me tell you what happened with Linda. This, this was in February. We got some Mexicans. They can work on a car. We got a Mexican. This motherfucker so bad, he does electrical work. So 
But you know, you got niggas, you know, they do some stuff. But a lot of these new cars got these electrical systems. And in Mexico, this guy, he, he, uh, and it's a whole, and he, he's a genius. We go in the backyard, you got to sit outside. But this motherfucker can fix anything on the car for cheap. So we go to law and stuff. We go to law and he does this stuff. And he the only one can speak English. So he runs the yard. And them motherfucking Mexicans be fixing some cars. So we, you got to sit outside. So it was a little warm that day. It was in February, though. And Linda went out there and she had to sit outside while this motherfucker changed something. And she sat out there in February. And when she got back home, I'm like, Linda, you got a fucking sunburn in February. She said, what? I'm saying, you sunburned. And I said, oh, that's right. I said that the news said that they had them solar flares hit today. So she got sunburned in February, and she's light-skinned. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, what you think about these solar flares? That's some powerful shit. So that raises the melatonin level, so you stuff enhanced with that stuff. That's what that is. That's the return of the gods. You see what I'm saying? That's the first solar flare. What's that? What do you think about those satellites falling out of the planet? Well, <laughs> all kind of things are happening. Different dimensions are opening. You remember on um, the dimension opened recently on um, what's that? A, a web, a, a, one of them, them airlines, and the people was the people was um, missing for about an hour. The, the airline pilots and they thought they was only out of things for about a couple of minutes. But they went through another dimension and was gone about two hours. When they caught up with them, they didn't fire on them either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, I'm talking about, no, this was, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in America. I'm talking about in America. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about motherfuckers in America about a couple months ago. Yeah. Air West. Uh, one of them. And the ship was missing about two hours on a regular airline ship, commercial airline. And they couldn't find them. And when they found them, they didn't know what the people was talking. I said, we, we wasn't missing. But they was gone by two hours, and they didn't get fired because the people knew what it was. They went through another dimension. You see, they went through another dimension. Mm -hmm. What's that? About what they can't find? They can't find them. In Japan. Mm. They got all kind of stuff happening. Um, they get, I mean, they got all kind of stuff happening. They had some mountains up here in Antarctica that wasn't there no more. What they were for. <coughs> some white mountains. So H.P. Lovecraft talked about when the gods return, they're going to return from a mountain called Rayleigh in Antarctica. And they found this whole glacier that was never there before. It was a whole city of mountains. White. Ice mountain glaciers wasn't there before. And that's what H.P. Lovecraft said. He said, when the great old ones come back, which is us, it's when Rayleigh rises from up under the sea, a crystal city in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's on. Mm -hmm. hey, what's that? Ice in Antarctica, the event. They sure did. They, they, they dealt with all of that. Death. They sure did. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me one more question. Hmm? You said it's one meal after Sunday? <coughs> yeah. As <coughs> It's breakfast. Yeah. No, nah, three meals a day, kid. Breakfast. <coughs> what happened was the, um, the, no, I'm going to take some liquor right now. <laughs> I stopped coughing. I know what that is. <laughs> That's that damn soy. <laughs> Fucking soy. Uh, when the, the guards used to live for years, even the Bible talks about these people. Methuselah is a story of a group of people that they have historically used to live for two or three hundred years. The Africans used to do that. Elijah Muhammad said that when they wanted to die, all they would do is just start eating three meals a day. And that's how they killed themselves. Yeah. That's how they killed themselves. You know. You know, that's like taking a car and running it on the street and never running out of gas and just keep running it. You're going to kill yourself. You 